Hi everyone, it's me, Ethan Van Skyver, 27-year veteran of the comic book industry. The world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Star Wars fan and trusted member of the media. I wonder, I wonder if today uh, my chat will work. I wonder if today, you know, some of you um, are complaining and you're like, boy, Ethan, you know, you're not doing as many live streams as you used to. Well, I mean, how would you feel if you were me and you came on your live stream and your chat didn't work? And therefore, you could not, you know, communicate with your public. Uh, what would you do? Uh, welcome. Let's see. Uh, Captain Chokeout says, I just ditched Cecil and Anna. Is Cecil up right now? I could really use Cecil in here tonight. I miss that guy. I worked all day long today. Today was a day that I actually worked. It was something that my dad used to call. Uh, my dad used to say, today is a day of work and not of many words. In other words, shut the fuck up and do your work. Or when he would make me do grab, uh, uh, you know, yard work, he would say, grab it, bag it. Don't be a, f a fool. You know, that's what today was. Today was one of those days in which I mostly did work. I had a lot to do. You know, we're shipping off books to get printed. I looked at them today. I, I wrote, I wrote from my heart. You guys don't know what it is to write from your heart. Most of you write from your asses. I write I write from my heart uh, when I'm writing these books for you guys. And it's true. It is very, very true. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I am here to, uh, to make great comics, to make comics that impact you. Did the uh, final design... For the Cyberfrog warts and all uh, slipcover, is it a sl not? No, that's not what I mean to say. Dust jacket, the dust jacket. Let me show you. You guys will be impressed by this uh, because you're easily impressed. Look at this. This is a beautiful dust jacket that I've designed. Uh, on this side, it has the original logo. It's designed by Matthew Martin. It says this says the complete Cyberfrog warts and all has the nice all caps comics logo. Uh, this says, in case you hadn't guessed, why is this microphone popping all the time? In case you hadn't guessed, my name is Cyberfrog. I'm the anonymous protector of this little town. Sort of like Robin Hood. I take robbers and I rob them. I take killers and I kill them. I take rapists and I, uh, no, I, I don't do that. Anyhow, that's my life. Fascinating, isn't it? Utterly riveting. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, um, there you go. Uh, right here, this is my artist's bio. This is my my author's bio, you would say. You know, when you write a book, you know, people want to know a little bit, a bit about you. And so you use the occasion of the dust jacket to give a little bit of a description about yourself. So I took the opportunity to write in case people didn't know who I was. People wanted to know. You know, they read Cyberfrog. They want to know more about me. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver, this is what I wrote right under this picture of my glorious, sunshiny face. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver is a 28-year veteran of the comic book industry. He is and has been called the world's most charming and disarming, elegant and eloquent, though humble man. He's a great big Star Wars fan and a trusted member of the media on his YouTube channel, Comic Artist Pro Secrets. He is the super CEO, president, chief creative officer, dictator for life of all caps comics, and the creator of Cyberfrog and Rainbow the Brute. Born in Provo, Utah on September the 3rd, 1974, he nevertheless considers himself a New Jersey native where he lives in a pretty nice bomb shelter uh, deep in the darkest part of the Pine Barrens with his wife, Andrea, and three kids, Hunter, Kaylee, and Ava. Those, this is where I might get a little defensive. This is where I might be getting defensive. Uh, those who have claimed that he is a fat pie eater are not Technically wrong. Although Ethan has pointed out that 2XL isn't necessarily considered fat by most people. The important thing is that he is a human sunbeam, beloved and cherished by all. So this is uh, probably one of the best. Oh, there's more. Uh, in bold, warm yourself in his rays. This, his creation, 
for it is good. Warts and all. Oh, God. It's just like <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. None of you can deny that. Now, if you don't, if you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. It's fantastic. Those of you who ordered warts and all are going to be so happy with this product. Uh, it really is great. Let me see what this is here. This is the entire book. This is warts and all right here. Look at this beautiful uh, Kyle recolored this uh, original cover Let me back out a little bit. Uh, the complete 90s work. Look at beautiful design. Can you guys see how beautiful this is? Can you guys see how beautiful this is? I don't know if you can. I dedicated this to you, to you guys. There's the chicken fry menu right here. This is all the stuff that's, oh, we got a spelling error here. We got a spelling. I got to go through here with a fine tooth comb. Clearly, we have a, a hall of heteros, it says right here. Hall of heteros, issue zero. Yeah. Here we have more of me talking about myself. Uh, this is a old picture of me. And this is a current picture of me. I haven't aged a bit. Does the sun age? Of course not. It doesn't. The sun doesn't age. This is probably the most well-designed book that Comicsgate has yet to produce. Uh, before every chapter, before every book, uh, there is an essay. There is a beautiful essay that lets you know a little bit about how the book was created, where it came from. It lets you know these things. We scroll down, I'll show you. I mean, this is the content of warts and all. Uh, that is the important thing. The content of warts and all is what's so impressive. It, it really does have everything in it. This is Cyberfrog number one, and we didn't leave a thing out. We even kept the letters column in here with a sketch by my brother Noah. With a sketch by my brother Noah. Uh, everything's here. This is Cyberfrog number two. And again, we have another essay uh, as we go into more and more, more and more Cyberfrog comics. Let me scroll down a little bit more here. Impressive. We have a censored cover. We have a never before seen cover. And here we go. This is the type of quality essay. This is the type of quality insight that you are going to get. This is what I did all day. You guys are like, why haven't you been live streaming? This is why I've been writing. Remember when Howard Stern was writing his book, Private Parts? And all he did was talk about writing his book, Private Parts. That was me today and yesterday too. Writing for you guys. Writing for you guys. Uh, I met the staff of Harris. This is me, my intro to Cyberfrog number one, the Harris Comics edition. Okay. I, 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 there's an essay before every single issue. I met the staff of Harris Comics, publishers of Vampirella, at a convention in Philadelphia in 1994. Comics were huge business. Conventions were big. Everyone was selling hundreds of thousands of copies of comics, and it had become its own miniature version of Hollywood. I networked the best way I could, waiting in lines to meet pros and editors and handing them copies of Hall of Heroes Cyberfrog Number 1. This led to my first paying job, filling in as an inker, on Vampirella versus Shadowhawk, I was paid $200 per page, and it was just before Christmas. That was absolutely incredible. I handed over every paycheck to my mom since our family was struggling to make it. However, I did make one extravagant purchase. I've never told you guys this. Hello, hello, uh, Roman Kenny. Hello, everybody that's coming in here. I made a one extravagant purchase with that money that I made. My first paying job in comics. A king-sized waterbed. King-sized waterbed. I loved my king-sized heated waterbed. That was 1994 luxury. But then my parents let their filthy, dirty, hippie friends sleep in it without my permission when I went to Indiana to go hang out with Matt and Trent for a week. There is nothing, nothing worse then coming home to a note on your bed from dirty, stinky hippies thanking you for its use while you were away. I will never forget or forgive that trauma. Uh, anyhow, I digress. 
Harris Comics came to the realization that they limited their publishing scope to half-naked vampire women, and that bubble, bubble would inevitably burst. Looking around for something to expand their repertoire, they remembered my frog book and signed me to a contract. I was suddenly being paid $360 a page to write pencil and ink cyber frog. I even tell you guys money. You know, I tell you guys about money. And it would be published in color. And Harris Comics would get me mentioned in Wizard Magazine. I began to write and draw something this. Bon Appetit. And that is the intro. That is the intro that you guys will get. That's just one of many intros. You guys are going to get all kinds of information uh, about what it was like in the 1990s to make this uh, Cyberfrog book. You were going to be, you're going to be thrilled. You guys are going to be delighted by this. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I've gone out of my way to make this book special. Yeah, very special. Look, here's another. This is the essay for Cyberfrog number two. Let me read to you from the essay from Cyberfrog number two. I hope you guys are enjoying. I know you are. Guys, settle in, get a cup of cocoa. Your Uncle Ethan's going to read a little to you. I mean, I want to brighten your day. I want to make your morning good. The other artists at Harris Comics were a poor influence on me. My natural inclination was to draw lots of detail and skinny little lines, but all the pros that I was meeting, a few of whom who had done work on C-list DC Comics monthly titles, were imitating Gaijin Studios. At that time, the artists at Gaijin were using fat coloring book lines around all their work, and it looked great. I was being told to throw away my Koenor technical pens and master the brush, or at least the crow quill. I tried. Honestly, I tried. One of the artists tried to give me a Mr. Miyagi-styled speech, telling me that I should get a brush and spend an entire week doing nothing but inking the same consistent straight line, row after row, wax on, wax off. I laughed, but what did I know? Maybe they were right. I never bothered learning, and I never will. The first issue had been released in 1996, and despite high expectations and a ton of promotion, sold only 80,000 copies, and that was a flop in 1996. That'd be a top 10 bestseller today. In the meantime, I was in the club, as it were. I was traveling all over the country promoting Cyberfrog. I met all of the people I was reading about in Wizard Magazine. Rob Liefeld offered me a job on Bad Rock, writing and art, for $100 more per page. I submitted a pitch in which he came out as gay and changed his name to Shamrock. I think I even called the pitch Fruity Pebbles. They weren't amused, but did a few years later offer to publish Salamandroid. I don't know why. This is all true. I want to, you know, give you guys a little information, a little background about what it was like. But I met Dan Fraga, still a close pal. Still a close pal. I'd only known him from his comics, so I lampooned his rap career in this issue as both rapper on stage and the guy dating Heather. He laughed and agreed to pencil the cover, which I inked. A small new rivalry was forming between me and Trent Kanuga, whose Creed comic book series was being hailed as the next big thing. Trent told me, it's good to be a big shot, Ethan. Egos were growing. Young nerds were posturing. Dan Fraga was aware of this and perhaps went over the line with his shots at Trent on his cover. Quote, suck my butt, Creed, unquote, wasn't exactly where I was coming from, but Fraga has a way with words. Fraga has a way with words. So again, I mean, you know, this is uh, this is the kind of quality content uh, that you guys are going to get from Cyberfrog Warts. And all. And again, I thank you. I thank you humbly from the bottom of my heart for backing uh, this campaign. Look how great this is. There's everything. Everything is in this. Here's the original Jay Lee cover. Tons of writing. Tons of important. Tons of important stuff is in here. I think you're going to enjoy it. I hope you do. I just want you guys to shut up and stop complaining about how I don't do live streams very much anymore. That's all I want. I want you guys to know uh, why I haven't been live streaming. I just want you to understand. So here we go. This is Reservoir Frog. Uh, Reservoir Frog. Is it? Look how cool Earwig was. I got to bring Earwig back. Got to bring Earwig back. Here's a Dementipede. Dementipede actually takes this young lady and he cuts her. He has razor blades on all of his arms and he cuts her right across the jawline, severing her head. 
He picks up her head, the top of her skull, still bloody, and sticks it to the side of a wall and goes, this is a good place for a stick up. <laughs> good one. Choke. And then this guy vomits everywhere. This is the quality content uh, that you will receive uh, if you backed Cyberfrog warts and all. And I, I hope that you did. I hope that you did. I hope you did back it. Here's Cyberfrog. By the way, uh, Walking Dead. Lick my sack. I did this before you did. Here's Cyberfrog with the barbed wire wrap baseball bat. He comes in through the uh, side window. Orkin man. Uh, and he's got the, the baseball bat here. And he's going to break it off on some of these uh, insectoid uh, bitches. You know. Boom. Breaks his bat in half instantly by knocking this dude's head off. So good, man. This book is really quality. And it's okay for kids, you know. It's okay for kids, too, I think. I would give this to my kids. No problem. Hmm. Let me keep scrolling down here. Yeah, I'm very pleased about this. This is going to print. I want to, I want this to come out. I want to have this in my hands at the beginning of February. Uh, this book is uh, am amazing. I think it's going to change a lot of people's lives. Uh, some of it's in black and white. If, if the book was originally printed in black and white, it is uh, in black and white here. Keep it all the same. You know, I try to stay consistent. Yeah. All right. So scrolling all the way down. Uh, here's more of me being handsome. Where's the picture? Oh, there I am. There's me being handsome. You know, one of the reasons why you guys enjoy my channel is my movie star. Uh, good looks. And uh, yeah, that's uh, there I am. More essays. Look at Chelson. Chelson still looks the same. You know, I get changed a little bit. I kind of, uh, I don't know. I kind of smoothed the route a little bit, but you know, Chelson still looks the same, like in the current comic book as she did way back uh, here. Here's Traumadeus. Traumadeus is in this. Everybody loves Traumadeus. Oh God, this is just such good stuff. And it's all going to be collected together. Here are the sketches that Arthur Adams did for Cyberfrog. He did three sketches of Cyberfrog for me to do a cover. He hates Comics Gate now. Well, no royalty check for you. What can I tell you? We got all of uh, Cyberfrog versus Creed. This took a little while. Trent was a little bit like, I don't know, man. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about licensing this book for me. You're gonna you're gonna put my character in your book? I said, Yeah, Trent, you can trust me. He said, I want a contract. I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He ended up sending me the contract. I made a good deal with Trent. And now we get to put all of, uh, we get to put Creed in here. We get to put his pages. Look at his pages, man. God, it's so cool. Our two characters, this is his character, Disorder, and then Ben Riley. The two of them in here together. They make a good team. Here's a little booty for you. Coming at you, Heather Swain in her underpants, sitting in hell with Ben Riley. Typical of what Cyberfrog was in the 1990s, guys. God, I just, I got to tell you, it is glorious. Here's me in a coffin with a blow-up girlfriend. Uh, I'm in a tuxedo, and I'm introducing the next, uh, the next comic book to you guys. Uh, here's a whole uh, gallery of pictures of me in the 90s. Alan Rogers for $2 says, fat. Thanks, man. Yeah, it is fat. It's pretty funky fresh. Uh, stuff about uh, the mail. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, you know, getting fan mail. The internet was in its infancy in the 90s. See, I'm an old man. I talk like an old man. The internet was still in its infancy in the 90s, and people still wrote fan letters back then. I always had a P.O. box where people could send mail directly to me, and I read it all. Getting fan art was the best. I published as much of it as I could, but the letters were great, and I'd often hear from the same readers with each issue. When I moved to Portland, Oregon for a year or so, my address was straight up putting all my comics. That was my address. I was 23 and happy to have my own place. The mailman used to bring me loads of letters, and sometimes I'd catch him while I was getting my mail. He'd say, hey, man, why you get so much mail? I'd say, it's fan mail. <laughs> he said it's fan mail. And he'd say the same thing to me every time I saw him. You getting your fan mail, right? 
yes. Uh, so this is good realistic dialogue here. Uh, Alan Rogers says, was your fan mail better than your Super Chats? No. CR Whiskey, thank you for $2. He says, super fat. Thank you so much. Super fat. Yeah, there are a few uh, photos of young Ethan in those letters columns. One is allegedly of me being thrown out of a Padres game. Never happened. And a lot of good uh, photos of me with pet frogs. It's a good way to make a connection with readers, and it was pretty fun. See how positive that is? He said, you get in your fan mail, right? Yeah, he didn't believe me. Well, then what, what the hell? You're putting tons of letters in my box. What do you think it is? I was a superstar then. I'm a superstar now. <laughs> Here's Amphibionics. And it's very sad. I mean, the book ends. I actually talk about how it all ended. It was very sad. My toy deal collapsing. You know, Harris Comics just being like, you know what? We're going to fuck you over. How does that sound to you? Didn't sound good. It didn't sound good to me. Here's all the bonus stuff. You get the wizard article. You get all of the... I hope you guys back this. I do a little description of every single cover. I do commentary on all of it. So, I mean, this is complete, right? I did a good job for you guys. This is complete. This was hard work. Uh, all of the articles, uh, some weird stuff here. Here are all the house ads. Me making fun of the house ads because they sucked. God, they were embarrassing. This was a good idea. Here's the action figure design. Uh, coloring. Coloring uh, attempts. Digital coloring, which was a nightmare. And then here we have the final, the cover. And this is the afterword. This is after, this is this is what I've written uh, to close out this book to you guys. This is the afterword. As you can see, look at this. You, you recognize this little frog at the bottom? That wasn't drawn in the 90s. This points to the future. Afterward. And so, with a heavy heart and no small amount of fear, I put down Amphibionics at the begin beginning of 1998, and I called DC Comics. I faxed them drawings of their new character, Impulse. They hired me. And Cyberfrog, Salamandroid, Heather Swain, Rumblebee, and all of the characters I'd just begun to bring to life fell into a deep sleep for the next 20 years. While they hibernated, I worked very hard at for DC, creating a few classic runs on Green Lantern and Flash. I won awards, and Wizard placed me at number one on their top 10 hottest, and I think they meant physically attractive, artist list. But the comic book industry became troubled by political activists who cared less about stories and more about promoting social justice, hiring creators for their race, sexual preference, or gender. They used their positions to alter the beloved characters that they didn't create in order to promote diversity and inclusion while chasing longtime fans and customers away for complaining about it. The prosperous 90s with its extreme comics slacker approach to politics and board pop culture are over. There is a persistent buzzing in the air. And while comic sales decline precipitously, creative people seem afraid of one another, terrified of the future. Cancel culture with its poisonous, ruinous tattling is killing pop culture and art. Because of this, in 2018, using YouTube and Indiegogo, we went into a world defeated by alien hornets called the Vespas, has set sales records for crowdfunding. It is an absolute joy to return to these characters, to this story again, and to introduce them to a new audience hungry for fun comic books. With Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet already breaking the record set by Blood Honey, a bright independent future awaits Frog and Salamander. I invite you to join us there, where your readership is appreciated and your friendship is returned. Thank you for reading, and I hope you enjoyed this collection. Ribbit, Ethan Van Skyver. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Put an ad. Oh, did I leave? I, uh, what happened? F, F, F. Oh, my God, guys. You got to be kidding me. And you guys are bored now? You weren't entertained by my... Uh, you weren't entertained by that? By me teaching you a few things? I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, fine. So we'll move on. We'll talk about something else. Uh, this is a church. This is the steeple. Okay? It's the steeple. 
a trapeze artist with diarrhea shits on 23 people. Uh, this happened in uh, Belgium. Uh, the wonderful Belgian circus, ha circus has arrived full of magic. Look at this. Magic and fun, illusion, laughter, show uh, with tamers and our brave trapeze artists was the presentation of the circus on Friday. Uh, what was not expected by the uh, audience, the children, adults, and old people, uh, is that in the middle of the show, and when it was the trapeze artist's turn, the athletic girl suffered a fateful, irreversible intestinal problem. Here's a quote from the audience. It's raining shit! Let's get out of here! Run away! Were the words of the people who were underneath the trapeze artist after noticing the unexpected rain. At least 23 spectators were splashed with fecal matter. It's not the Cirque du Soleil. Far from it. It's the circus of the shit, said affected people. At the moment, it is unknown if the smelly and angry spectators are going to present a complaint about, about the events. Okay, so we got that going on. I mean, we, we do have a... Uh... <laughs> What's going on with my internet? Is it not working right now? Are you guys unable? Okay, you were able to see that? Okay, good. There's people just, uh, there's a lot of stories about poop in the news uh, going on right now. A lot of people uh, pooping on each other. Let's see what's going on in the chat here with you guys. Uh, G Funk Palace One says, Can you find the breakdown, uh, find and break down more woke commercials? Oh, so you like that. Now, I did a, a commercial. Uh, well, look, I was sitting there watching. Uh, I was watching a show about serial killers. Actually, I'm watching a show. I can't be. i got to be honest about this. I didn't want to say this in my video because it would sound troubling. I'm watching a lot of uh, documentaries about husbands who kill their pregnant wives. Andrea is not pregnant. I have no plans. No, that thought is not in my head. Uh, but. It is pretty interesting to me. So I'm watching this stuff on Hulu and all of a sudden all these commercials show up and they're just woke as fuck. And I don't know what they're selling. Like I got a Ritz cracker commercial that I uh, showed you guys and the Ritz cracker commercial. I mean, it was bizarre. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. I'll, I'll bring up the Ritz cracker commercial so that we can watch it together. Even though I already made a video about it, we'll, we'll look at it live. Uh, it is insanity. And I don't know why they do this. I'm not sure why they feel the need to do this. And, and you know, this does not sell crackers. I mean, you know, not to me anyway. Let's have a look at these woke, the, the pestilence uh, of woke uh, ads right now. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ritz crackers, where there's love, there's family. Uh, so here we've got this guy. All right, here we go. Turn this up. All right, so let me just scroll back for a second here. Just uh, should I let it run and then should I let it run and then go backwards? I don't know how to present this. People got mad at me for pausing it all the time, uh, but this guy's got Ritz crackers, uh, and he stole his mom's purse. Uh, this is a message from his mom. I miss you. No, it's it's to his mom. I miss you. October sixteenth. Happy holidays, mom. Uh, can we talk? She doesn't want to talk to you. She clearly doesn't want to talk to you. Okay. Because, you know, you like Ritz crackers. The misery and the, look at this. Oh my God. So we cut from like children hugging each other in an orphanage to this guy. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me so hard. Hold on a second. Let me look at that again. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> Would you fuck me? Ritz, Nabisco, I fuck me so hard. Got miserable Holidays crying people. Spending time with family. So you've got a homeless guy. First of all, you've got this homeless guy and he's sitting at a table with these underage girls unsupervised. And I find that to be very weird. And they're gossiping about him. These two girls are eating a full plate of food. Full plate of food. They well, look at him. You're born into? This guy's clearly cold. You know, he's homeless. He's homeless, probably. Hasn't eaten in a while. And here's, thank you so much. 
I haven't eaten in four days. And you guys are eating a full meal. And you give me, you push forward. This sacrifice of yours will not be forgotten. You know, a single Ritz cracker with a slice of government cheddar on it. Really appreciate you. And then she laughs at him. Watch. He's like, you're joking, right? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not giving you shit. That is white privilege right there. So we just witnessed white privilege. White privilege gives Ritz crackers to poor people. I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to laugh at them. More Ritz crackers from this crazy woman here. Old people dancing. And then we've got this homosexual who shows up and he hugs the other homosexual. Now, this is one thing uh, that has to stop. This is one thing that SJWs are doing. And and you know what? I, I pointed this out to Eric July. Eric July is onto this now. He's talking about this. SJWs. First of all, look at this guy. This guy's like a linebacker for the Rams. <laughs> He's got blue eyeshadow on. He's got dangly earrings and lipstick. This isn't what gay guys look like. Gay guys don't actually do this. I understand that you've only got one minute to make a video and to make a point. But... Uh, Homosexual men do not wear lipstick and blue eyeshadow. They don't. Not unless they're also wearing a big wig and a dress and fake boobs. Uh, Not unless they're putting on a drag show. Not unless they're pretending to be Petula Clark or something and they've got a show, you know. They don't wear lipstick, weirdos. I've never seen a gay guy wear lipstick before. They might wear a little lip gloss. But they don't full on wear red lipstick and blue eyeshadow and dangly earrings. But here's the whole point of this. Uh, the whole point of this is uh, SJWs are, are making a, a full on concerted effort to effeminize black men. What is going on? We've seen this happen over and over again. They're doing everything they can to present black men as weak, effeminate. Not threats to them. Guys, we, let's just make gay, let's make black guys all gay men. That way they won't cuck us in front of our wives. And that's all this is. And every black person in this ad, look, here's another one. Watch this. First of all, these guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I like this. Fa- every frame is great. All right, so we're picking up a Ritz cracker here. You know, the common denominator in all of this misery, this is one of the most depressing commercials in the world, is Ritz. Ritz crackers. Extremely depressing. They're putting something in Ritz crackers that divides up families uh, and turns men gay, I guess. It's like the, you know, Alex uh, Jones thing. This guy, giving eyes to this guy. Where there's love and there's a Ritz cracker there. This guy's putting something in his mouth. And then you've got the gay guy coming. He's like, you ain't fucking my man. Now you've got right over here, you've got another homosexual man, homosexual black man, who is also wearing makeup and dangly hoop earrings that belong to a woman. So to Ritz crackers, gay men dressed like women. And all of the black guys in this image are gay. They're gay. And they wear lipstick and they wear feminine clothing. <laughs> They're no threat. My question is, is it a man? Is it, like, who made this commercial? Was it an SJW man? Uh, or was it an SJW woman? I'm pretty sure it was a man. I think this is what men would do. Pretty sure a man would want to do this. And it, he's a white guy, too. Almost definitely a white guy. There's family. <laughs> Hold on. I missed them dancing in the background. This is the best thing. They got this part right. I want you to not look at these guys. Look at the, the couple dancing in the background here. Love, there's family. Join us in helping create a more welcoming world. A taste of welcome. <laughs> Sounds like a goddamn nightmare. Ritz. Ritz. A taste of welcome. A taste of co- welcome. What? Uh, okay. Uh, I don't want this world. I don't want this world. This world is depressing. It's full of broken families. It's full of poverty. Uh, it's full of weirdness. It's full of disconnected people. Ritz crackers, what are you doing? What is with the virtue signaling? What does that have to do with selling crap? 
<laughs> it's like, and the thing is, like, you talk to these SJWs, like whoever is in the board meeting, whoever's in creative right now, you're, you just look at this and you go, how are, uh, <clears throat> how does this sell crackers exactly? Sell what? I'm sorry, crackers? What? What are we selling? I thought we were selling a new world. I thought Nabisco was interested in selling a new, diverse, and inclusive world. No, you, you just want to sell saltines, I. Okay, bitch. All right, so that is uh, Ritz Crackers. Now, there are plenty more like this. I mean, these commercials are absolutely insane, and, and there's a whole breed of them right now. I mean, people are saying, you know, break them down, but I don't even want to because they're so depressing. We got, we got, we got Proctor and Gamble like doing nothing but preying on white guilt. I mean, that, that is what they're doing. They're making commercials now. What is Proctor and Gamble? They're baby powder. I mean, Proctor and Gamble. Oh, Proctor and Gamble's Gillette. They're Gillette. No wonder. I just put that together. Procter & Gamble's Gillette, they've got this whole thing where uh, you wouldn't even know. Like, if you watch this commercial, you wouldn't know what they're selling. You, you would have no idea. This is just, this entire commercial, which is a minute and 40 seconds, uh, 47, six seconds long, is, fuck you, white people. Fuck you, white people. Watch this. Wake up. Okay, yeah. There he is with his kid. What are they selling here? They got a nice car. Cars? Roll up the window. Roll up the window. It's the prosperous looking uh, black man in the city. We don't want you in our elevators there. Meanwhile, these white people can our swimming pool. Sir, can I help you? I've seen this in Pretty Women. Pretty Woman. Everywhere we go today in 2020, if you are black, you're getting dirty looks. People don't want to serve you. It's 2020, but nothing's changed. Now, here's the kicker. Now you're going to feel stupid, white people. He's the judge. And now's the part where he puts on his lipstick. Cut to, <laughs> cut to a close-up. And he puts on his lipstick. That's right. Now, don't you feel dumb? Now he gets to judge you. And boy, he's looking like he's feeling pretty judgmental right now. Let's talk about the look so that we can see beyond it. Procter & Gamble, talk about bias. Hashtag talk about bias. You've got social justice warriors that are just in there making woke shit. They're just, I mean, Procter & Gamble, we thought Gillette taught him a lesson. You know, they tried to lecture men on... Uh, what it means to be a man and how uh, probably you shouldn't go flirt with women. What was that Gillette commercial? Uh, but yeah, now it is. Uh, <laughs> they're just full on woke. I don't know what they're selling. They're just trying to. Uh, they're changing 1962. Uh, G Funk Palace One says, Bull, he's too young to be a judge. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Stephen Miller says he just sentenced a black teen to life for a drug, yeah, for like a drug charge. Victimless crime. Uh, how weird. The best a man can be. Uh, what the what the fuck is wrong with these companies, says Silver Axe 13? Well, uh, they're in a position to spend money. Again, this is what SJWs do. Understand. They're in a they get themselves into a position where there's money, and then they spend the money doing something other than what the main purpose of the company is that they were hired into. They do not care. They don't care. The Procter and Gamble is, is there to sell baby powder razors. You know, that's, that's what Procter and Gamble does. They're not interested in that. They've got access to Procter and Gamble's money. It's a lot. And now we're going to preach social justice because that we do know about. 
we know about social justice. We know about socialism. We know about Marxism. We don't really know anything about selling razor blades. We don't know that. We know that men use them. Men use razor blades. So now's our chance to yell at the customer base. And guys, they did this in comics. That's what this is all about. You know, that's what uh, Comicsgate was all about. You know, we witnessed it just in our little hobby, in our little industry. These people came in and uh, took advantage of uh, the, the means, the mechanism of business, changed it, <laughs> you know, used the characters, used the comics, used whatever wealth there was to just yell at you guys about what bigots you are. That's the only thing these people know how to do. I mean, when you have no skills, when you have no talent, when you have nothing that makes you better than someone else, the one thing that you can say <laughs> that you have is you're not a racist. I'm not a racist, though. These guys that are talented, that are skilled, that are producing product that people want, they're racist. So that makes me, I'm not racist, I'm better than them. And now it's my turn, it's my job, it's my obligation to lecture them. Procter & Gamble doesn't want to stand up and say to these weirdos, hey, could you please sell our razor blades? Because they would say, so in a world of injustice, in a world in which little black girls are being called the N-word, uh, you just want to sell razors, eh? I see, bigots. Nobody wants to be called that. Check this out. The lady at the store. That is not a compliment. It's an ugly, nasty word, and you are going to hear it. Nothing I can do about that. But you are not going to let that word hurt you. You got your idea? The word is capitalism. The, the word's capitalism. You're not going to let that word hurt you. Okay, so stop you. Yeah. Now... When you get pulled over, uh, I'm a good driver. Okay. Baby, don't worry. This is not about. Doesn't matter that you're a good driver. You're black. You're going to get pulled over. You will get dragged out of your car. They will beat you for no reason. It's just the way of the world. About you getting a ticket? This is about you not coming home. I'm going to be okay. No, that's not true. You won't necessarily be okay. All over the world, the police are beating black people to death for no reason. Be afraid. Don't trust the people around you. Certainly do not trust the police. They're there to hurt you. They're all bigots. You know, don't trust your fellow man. Look around, and if white people are looking at you weird, it's because they hate you because of the color of your skin. By the way, uh, brought to you by Procter & Gamble. Makers of uh, Johnson & Johnson. Are they Johnson? I think they're Johnson & Johnson. Makers of baby powder. Fine Gillette razor blades. Right. Okay. You are not pretty for a black girl. You are beautiful, period. Okay? Don't ever forget that. <laughs> My black is beautiful from P&G, Procter & Gamble. So they've got a whole campaign of this, like, white guilt shit. You know, whole campaign of it. Talk about bias. It's time for everyone. This is all they can do. By the way, this is a political message. This has nothing to do with Procter & Gamble or their goals as a company. It's no longer about selling products to people. It's no longer about respecting customers. It's no longer about any of that. It's about going, you bigot. <laughs> Why? So these people can have jobs. It's That's what they do. That's all they do. Mike Murphy says, uh, this is what happened to comics on a bigger stage. Three years later, we're the ones earning profit and providing a service. Funny how that works. Yeah. But I mean, just recognize why this is happening everywhere. You know, you, got, you just got to know why it's happening and see it for what it is. You know, comics gate isn't unique. It's not just about comics. It's everywhere. This is just everywhere. And in the meantime, there are racists. There is actual real racism going on in the world right now. And I'm not saying it's uh, there are no white supremacist bigots. There are. There are plenty of them. But there's racism every single day that's excused. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's excused and celebrated. 
Data Racer 117 today uh, posted this. It was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, the Rock uh, announces that, uh, hey, look, we've. <laughs> we... <laughs> The Rock's making a movie called Black Adam. It's a DC Comics character, and one of the characters that's going to be in the movie is Cyclone, ready to rumble. A pleasure to officially welcome Quintessa Swindle, not Swindle, Swindle, to our Black Adam cast. They'll be taking on the role. They'll be taking on the role of Cyclone. Can't wait to work with them, and we're ready to rumble in the DC jungle. Bring it! Hashtag Cyclone. Hashtag Black Adam. Hashtag Respect their pronouns. Produ uh, production starts spring of 2021. Can you be the Rock is actually the Rock is respecting pronouns here. He's actually conscious of pronouns. You are clearly a woman. You are not them. You are not something else. You are you are clearly a female. Uh, and if you aren't, then why do you get to play the role of a female character? Let alone another you know another ginger. Uh, we'll talk about that in one second. But if you are not a woman, if you are something other than a woman, why are you being cast as a, a, a woman? Shouldn't a woman get that part? Why does a non-binary person uh, get to, you know, uh, play that role? Why? That's not right. That's not fair. That's not just. Now, here's the racism. White redheads will never win. And I just love it. Yeah. Race bend them gingers. Racist to the back again. They lose every single time. Diversity. You love to see it. Hey, we got another ginger. So this whole thing is uh pretty strange. Uh, for some reason, people are starting to notice that every white red-headed character, from the little mermaid to Wally West to Archie, are all they're all race swapped <laughs> into black characters and I can't explain it. It's really weird, but they love it. And they're doing it on purpose. Now. I think I haven't, I haven't actually seen them do Archie, but they will. Archie is right around the corner. They're definitely going to race swap Archie. They have to black women stealing roles from white women. I love to see it for people that are wondering Quintessa goes by they, them soon. There will be no redheads left. Nature is healing, says ethereal bisexual. That's another white character I can move to the Negro column. I love it. I'm trying to catch them all like Pokemon. Another redhead secured. Another ginger gone. Perfect. It's a white guy here. So I think he is a ginger. <laughs> I'm looking at his little picture. Redheads love to think they're oppressed. They're not oppressed. But we got another redhead in the bag. Yeah. I know the race is going to be mad chilly, mad chilly. Uh, and over here, the rock respects pronouns. I'm not even in this fandom. Sounds like I need to be though. Uh, DC making the right moves with representation, a GNC and non-binary actor playing a superhero representation matters. And this is fantastic news. I hope they freaking kill it. Tony Tellis says, Seeing someone like at The Rock use proper pronouns for an actor whom identifies as non-binary or gender non-conforming is so refreshing. This will be amazing. They will be amazing in this role. A non-binary actor? Hell yeah. Also great to see Dwayne use the proper pronouns. The Rock using they, them pronouns is king shit. The Rock using the proper pronouns. You'd love to see it. Heart, heart, heart. Look how easy it is to respect someone's pronouns. The Rock said non-binary rights. The Rock using correct pronouns. You love to see it. So uh, The Rock is respecting <laughs> respecting pronouns. Uh, while these people, these pronoun respecters, are all being absolutely despicably racist uh, about replacing... Uh, white redheads with black people? I don't understand. There is no real consistent sort of stance about any of this. It's all a big joke. It's all just a great big joke. The rock is a pronoun. Yeah. <laughs> Let 
me see. The Rock is just trying to get paid. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, let me see what you guys are saying here. Uh, biology matters. Marvel is going to make the thing pink. Is I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that were true. I really wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Evan Hat Hatfield says, 3 a.m. is for meatheads headed to the gym, fatso. That's why I'm not going. I'm a slender, sophisticated gentleman of class, style, and intellect. Uh, St. Backtrack says, I need to be in this fandom because the one man bowed down to SJW authoritarianism by not calling a woman she when it's clear as day it's a woman. Hooray. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's up. This The world is uh, getting weird. Fortunately, you have me here to hang out with. And I'll make everything okay for you. I'll make it all make sense. Drunky McAsshole for $5 says, if The Rock would put on lipstick and eat a Ritz cracker, the SJWs might finally achieve Nirvana. Why won't The Rock do that for them? <laughs> Ritz crackers. <laughs> I like Ritz crackers because the word itself means rich white people. It's very interesting. Uh, Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet is uh, up at $1,115,233 because of you guys. Hey, thanks a lot. You know, I'm working on all this stuff. I'm getting all this stuff done. Getting it out the door. Warts and all is going to ship before Wreck Planet. Wreck Planet is going to be like May. And it's going to take three months to ship this. I've never seen anything like this. We have 10,318 backers. And that's just so far. I'm going to keep this campaign up. We'll probably have 11,000 backers by the time it's ready to ship. And uh, that's going to be pretty heavy. It's going to be gigantic. But we are going to get it done. It's going to be beautiful. Here's the story. It's 2018, 20 years after the Vespas invasion. Cyberfrog is reunited with his friend Heather Swain, who is surviving in the New Jersey Pine Barrens with their 10-year-old daughter Lily and others. They live by these four rules. One, stay in the trees. The Vespas have demonstrated they have trouble maneuvering in the forest. Number two, stay near the smoke. Survivors keep bonfires going constantly. The Vespas are repelled by smoke and fire. Number three, stay calm. The Vespas are intoxicated by panic and fear. And number four, always wear red. The Vespas can't see red. Wearing red cloaks makes you invisible to them. The survivors believe they're safely hidden and have been living in relative safe safety for years. But the return of Cyberfrog brings big trouble. Big, big trouble. So Cyberfrog 2, Wreck Planet, you don't want to miss it. People who back at the $25 level are going to get like the comic book. You're going to get a toy. And the toy looks awesome. So it's beautifully packaged. It's a, I mean, it's a collectible collectible. Uh, it's really, really nice. We went out of our way to make sure that if you don't want to take it out of the box, you can display it in the box. It looks beautiful. Uh, you're going to get the, the toy. You're going to get a bonus comic, Heartsick Horror, Cyberfrog. Uh, it is uh, drawn by Kanan White and also EJ Morgis. Uh, Salamandroid Color Zine Classic Reprint Comic, six trading cards, two stickers, a keychain, and, of course, the PVC toy. Don't miss out. Get a Salamandroid toy with a bendy tail. I was demonstrating these. I've got silver, gold, and white ones over there. Andrea took the uh, Andrea took the regular one into her office. She's got that, uh, you know, displayed on her table. She loves them. I mean, we made these toys together. You know, it's something to be proud of. Salamandroid Death's Sting, a spinoff book here. Uh, and uh, we're sold out of the honeycomb. Are we? Are we sold out of them? Let me check. Sometimes there's a one pop. No, we're sold out. Okay. Sometimes one pops up. There's a refund. Sold out of honeycomb boxes. Um, thank you guys uh, a million times for making this campaign successful. If you haven't backed it yet, make sure that you do. The link is in the description. You really don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. And if you haven't read Blood Honey yet, uh, the link uh, to get Blood Honey, we have an eBay store. So you can get copies of everything that we've done before. Uh, Rainbow, oops, Rainbow the Brute. Uh, is the current campaign uh, of that's coming out after Cyberfrog uh, Wreck Planet? Here is the video. Oh, Inbo, the brute. The last. Let me start over again. New from all caps comics. Rainbow, the brute. The last real man in Fairyland. A tale of prismatic pain, a spectrum of brutality, and a pretty good dad. Good dad. Choke slam a unicorn by backing it today, only on Indiegogo. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back Rainbow Brute today. Here's a big blast of high tea sunshine for you. Meet, meet Rainbow. He's a brute, the last real man in Fairyland. I had a conversation with somebody on Twitter today, somebody who was arguing with Matt, Mar uh, not Matt Martin, Mike S. Miller uh, about something or other. And he was like, is Rainbow the brute gay? And I'm like, no, he's very, very heterosexual. Look at him. Uh, Rainbow the Brute is a hard, fighting, hard drinking fairy barbarian who battles the thundercloud men and maintains order under the rainbow. It isn't easy with unicorn pests, thumb sucking apes, commie elves, and onion grove children requiring constant vigilance. But Rainbow's worst day ever happens when, after a series of honeysuckle shots, he quarrels with one of the unbearables, a clan of miserable, emotionally manipulative grizzlies. They might as well work for Procter and Gamble. Uh, and they steal something precious uh, to him. Not only that, but Paula Pocket, a former girlfriend whom he hasn't seen in 15 years, finds him to let him know he has a son, and that boy needs a father. Mount up on Rainbow's girthy stallion napalm for the adventure of a lifetime to retrieve his sword and perhaps along the way teach young Shiro Pocket what it means to be a man. Uh, so good times here. We've got this choke slam a unicorn with Rainbow the Brute. Why wouldn't you choke slam a unicorn? Uh, here is uh, the main cover. Uh, this 24-hour variant is gone. Here's the Kyle Ritter variant cover. You want to get that? We've got the My Girthy Stallions uh, logo here. Take a ride on Ethan Van Skyver's Girthy Stallion. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Uh, and this right here is going to be on the um, thermos. You know, if you uh, if you back at the $200 level, you're going to get the executive briefcase, which looks like a, a gay lunchbox. Uh, but it actually contains comic books. Uh, and uh, we will, once we get to 300,000, which we're pretty close to, uh, we're going to put a thermos in there, a Rainbow Brute thermos for you. And very nice bonus. We've got original art. This is the big thing here, though. Cool story, bro. Toxic ta uh, fairy tales for masculine men. I'm going to put this in bookstores. We've got some of the biggest uh, comic book creators in the world agreeing to work on these. Just take a, a fairy tale, take a story, take a fable, take a nursery rhyme. And make it badass, you know, make it so that it, you know, isn't lame. Uh, make it high T. Uh, we've got people doing that. We've got Kelly Jones is doing one. Kelly Jones is taking Jack Spratt and making it about cannibalism. I don't know if that's high T, but it certainly is cool. Uh, we've got really, really big creators working on this. Uh, John Malin's Little Red Riding Hood uh, spin is amazing. Kenneth Rocafort's doing uh, the Gingerbread Man, but he's doing it like uh, Gingerbread Man's John Wick. Uh, he sent me the script today. I laughed my balls off. It was really funny. <laughs> I, can have, I, I can't wait for this. It's going to be great. What a great gift to get for your father, for your boyfriend, for your husband, ladies. Get this gift. Cool story, bro. Toxic fairy tales for masculine men. It's everything that you need. Uh, links in the description. Look at this. $286,000 right now. Uh, we are on our way to... Uh, uh, getting to 300,000 and making that thermos. And then the last campaign is this, Snowman, A Cold Day in Hell. New from all caps comics, Snowman, A Cold Day in Hell. The victim of a genocidal massacre has somehow returned from the dead and is carving a path of death across the heart of America. Driven by the echoes of silent screams, this is the story of a man once known as Black Dog, the one now forever known as the Snowman. Snowman, a cold day in hell. Back it today, only on Indiegogo. Yeah, my buddy Matt Martin, who worked with me at Hall of Heroes, uh, doing this book. This book was a smash hit in the uh, in indie comic circles, 1990, early 2000s. Uh, he's bringing it back. We're publishing it at All Caps Comics. Uh, Matt Martin's Snowman, a cold day in hell. Uh, this just kicks so much ass. Uh, everyone's excited to see it come back. The artwork looks obviously phenomenal and uh matt martin is uh, is he the best i think he might be the best look at this look how badass this is it's about a the vengeance of a native american spirit you know and in, in the old west uh turns into a, a demon of snow and uh kills people uh, here's snowman here uh this is trent canuga's variant cover uh here's snowman loving all the lovely ladies I like that he does that. I like that he loves all the lovely ladies. And here, I mean, this, look how fucking awesome. God damn it, Matt. Excuse my language. This is Black Dog. This is the, the demon, the Native American demon that has become Snowman. Black Dog. Awesome. Just awesome. 
yeah, you guys need to back this. This is us when we were kids, you know. Here's Matt. There's me. There's Trent Kanuga, who was also going to be joining us doing Creed. Uh, and um, it's rad. It's great to be with these guys again, making comics. Making comics together. You know, punishing SJWs with our greatness. I just want to punish them. I want to punish the, the same people, the same types of people who are sitting there making those stupid commercials for Ritz Crackers, Procter & Gamble, all those weirdos, same weirdos who ruin the comic book industry. I want to punish them under my boot heel. We have to do more kick-ass stuff. We have to fear nothing. We cannot be politically correct. We can't. That cannot be a consideration anymore. I have changed my life. I have now said I'm going to say gay whenever I want. I'm going to say retard whenever I want now. You know, I'm going to say those words. I'm not going to bend to politically correctness anymore, political correctness. I'm not going to do it. I mean, fuck these people. Seriously, just fuck them. You know, it's like these people, they're this authoritarian speech code police force, you know, that want to do nothing but ruin everything that's good, everything that's fun, everything that people are enjoying. They're coming in to go naughty, naughty, naughty uh, and uh, ruin your life. Just ruin your lives over it. Uh, you know, it's great to be free. I will say this. I, I enjoy an advantage that other people don't. I am I work for myself. You know, my business is sustained by you guys. I don't have to answer to anyone. I, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. I can live by my own code. I wish everybody could be like that. But, you know, we got to work towards it. We just have to work towards defeating these people. We got to do it. Uh, in the meantime... While this is happening, <laughs> it's like DC Comics is completely wrecked. You can't even deny it anymore. You know, these SJWs have ruined, have ruined these companies so badly. They've taken their eye off the ball. It's no longer about producing great comics anymore. It's about something else. Their focus is on something else. And because of that, even Bleeding Cool has to admit. Uh, this would never have happened. This would never have happened 10 years ago. I got to tell you, I worked at DC. You had competent people working there. By the way, some of those people who would have fixed this are now working for me. Which is great. Making a coloring book for me. Look at this coloring book. <laughs> Comics to Color, featuring the art of Ethan Van Skyver. Cyberfrog Survivor's Coloring Book. 24 pieces of his exquisite comic line art for you to color from world-renowned artist Ethan Van Skyver. That's me. Here it is. This is the uh, coloring book cover. Adult coloring book. And it is an adult coloring book. There's like gore in it. There's like blood and gore. You know. DC Comics misprints Lois Lane collection with printer guidelines. It might seem churlish to blame all of this on the recent redundancies and slashes made to DC Comics Collections Department. No, it doesn't, Rich. It seems like this is a direct result of that. But given how much recalls and reprints cost, is this really a saving that DC Comics wants to make? Now, see, Rich Johnson uh, is on kind of our side about this. Uh, competence is being fired. Competent people have been removed from DC Comics. They don't want them anymore. They're turning over... Uh, the reins of DC Comics to activists, to activists who can make comic books that reflect AT&T's social ambitions, how they want to appear to other companies. It's no longer going to be about you, about cool stories, about fun. Comic books don't even matter to them. So if we're going to make comic books at all, uh, let's hire people who are going to make comic books that sort of reflect the same shit that we just saw in those Procter & Gamble commercials. An alternate reality uh, in which uh, white people are devils, treating people of color miserably, in which black men all wear lipstick and dangly earrings. <laughs> <sighs> and this is the end result. Bleeding Cool recently reported on how an entire color was accidentally removed from the trade paperback of Underworld Unleashed. Oh, no. An entire color. You know, it's like, these, these books are made of four colors, you know, four colors. So if you remove one, <laughs> I didn't even know about this. Let me see this shit. 
oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, whoops. Uh, they took this green color away. That's nice. Good job, guys. It's Green Lantern. Let's take green out of it. Hey, let's do a book about Green Lantern and let's forget to put green in there. You got to be kidding me. This is incompetence on the scale, on the level of Heather Antos, misspelling everything in Spider-Man back in 2017. This is dreadful. I don't know if that was Heather Antos. That might have been Alana Smith or one of these people. Who knows? One of the Milkshake crew. Milkshake 2, 3, 4, or 5. One of them. All right. Uh, and then how somebody cut away the Martian Manhunter's cloak on the cover of the JLA omnibus. Oh, yeah. There, his cloak is gone there. They just kind of took it away. Okay. So that's this is where it used to be. Uh, it's hard. That would be hard. Let's let's just remove that. Great. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, and because bad things come in threes, it appears that nobody removed the printer's margins from the recent Lois Lane trade paperback, Enemy of the People, that DC Comics published a couple of weeks ago. You can see the dotted lines around these pages. Look at this. you got to be fucking kidding me. you got to be kidding me. This is the printer's margin. No word balloons can go outside of this line. All important art must stay in this line. This is supposed to be removed. This entire book looks like you're supposed to cut. <laughs> you're supposed to cut it out. Oh, what a disgrace! What an absolute disgrace! Is it possible someone might want to keep an eye on this sort of thing going forward? Who? Who's left over there? Who do they have over there that's left that remains that could do this? It is a. It's a. It's just a donkey show of incompetence. It's a goat rodeo. It's a goat rodeo. We need to use the phrase goat rodeo more often. Yeah. People are not taking shit seriously anymore, guys. You've got to take shit Seriously. Take it serious. Take shit seriously. Take it off the porch. Porch pirate steals the bait box filled with cat shit. Now, uh, here's something that you guys could consider doing. This is in the news today. Uh, an Ontario woman. Now, if your packages, it's Christmas time. You're getting a lot of packages. I know that I am. You know, I do have an abundance of cat shit in my house. My cat, just ask her, should be happy to just excrete freshly squeezed fecal matter into an Amazon box. People are stealing these boxes, these packages right off the porch. An Ontario woman fed up with a package thief said she left a box of shit on her front porch and it was stolen within 40 minutes. That is fast. Laurie Pringle of Hamilton said she's had several packages disappear from her front porch during the past few three years. Uh, she decided to set out a bait package filled with cat shit. I live on a very busy downtown street. My front door is pretty much opens out onto the sidewalk. I've had a number of packages stolen in the three years I've lived here, Pringle says. As a result, I have a very clear label for all my Amazon packages indicating that they should ring my video doorbell. A couple of the couriers that Amazon uses almost never read the label, so that results in my packages being stolen fairly often. Pringle says the box of shit was stolen within 40 minutes of being set outside. The homeowner said she captured the theft on video and a neighbor identified the culprit as the same person who had recently swiped a package from their front porch. That's good. Got to outsmart these people. Here's a black man that would wear lipstick. I mean, this is the thing. Like, he would, you know. It works. When RuPaul does it, it works. That other guy, it didn't work at all. You guys, uh, my 
live streams are so elegant. You guys don't even notice how well put together they are. You're so like used to just sort of enduring a live stream uh, where somebody rambles aimlessly. I mean, I'm rambling and it seems aimless, but I know exactly where I'm going. It's called planning. I put together a show. I put together a show for you guys. Do you appreciate it? No. Not a bit. Not a bit. Pretty excited about Frogapalooza, too. I got everything ready. The warts and all campaign is going to be fucking awesome. You guys, uh, you guys don't even realize yet how great it's going to be. Yeah. Let me show you this. Let me show you a lot of stuff. Other people don't get to see this. You guys do. You guys get to see it now because you're watching now. You know that I'm going to take down the stream as soon as it's done. Aren't you glad you're watching? Get ready tomorrow morning. You're going to be hearing a lot of people going, Ethan, if you keep taking your streams down, we're going to unsub from you. Why do you do this to us? Why do you take your live streams down? But you're here. You're witnessing all this stuff. You know, you guys deserve special treatment. Shadowhawk says, don't worry, E. We're duly impressed. Thank you so much. This is a, a ballet act, you know. Frogapalooza, these are the interiors. Look how great this looks. Frogapalooza zine, you open it up and you see this. Created, written, and illustrated by Ethan Van Skyver. I am amazing. I, I got to say, I am a better writer than anyone. I'm way better than Micah Curtis. Way better than Liam Gray. You know, and those guys are the best of the best from what they tell me. Lord Blackwind, $10, says, thanks for the content, uh, T-O-E. Uh, something good to listen to while I paint 40K figures. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm way better than those guys. Those guys are, uh, you know, according to them, they're the best writers in Comicsgate. You know, but I think I'm better. Uh, I had to write this essay. Again, I write essays now. Yeah. Uh, Dude Bark says, EVS used to be conceited, but now he's great. W more on that later. More on that later. That is true. Uh, here's what it says. Between 1993 and 1994, I was a loser, adrift in a sea of loserhood. Already, you're picturing it. Already poetry, right? I was a loser. No, but I was a loser with a dream. And that dream was a vivid dream of frogs. Comic books about frogs. That dream has come true. You got to be kidding me. This is, this is some of the best writing that's ever been and don't deny it. Let me say that again. Let me repeat this. Let me repeat this. Between 1993 and 1994, I was a loser adrift in a sea of loserhood, but I was a loser with a dream and that dream was a vivid dream of frogs, comic books about frogs. That dream has come true. This book contains the struggle. Here's where we get Germanic. This book contains the struggle to achieve that dream. It isn't the glory. It's the struggle towards the glory and eventual triumph of the frog. If that sounds Hitlerian, that says more about you than it does about me. Okay. Like a polywog swimming in murky water, slowly developing hind limbs, forelimbs, and losing its tail, this is the slow, inevitable growth of a froglet that would eventually turn green for that adrift loser of 1993. You weren't meant to ever see any of this. So remember that. When Cyberfrog remarks, quote, I'd complain about the stupid programming on cable, but I have an illegal hookup, he may as well have been advising you, the reader, and indeed each and every one of us, enjoy Ethan Van Skyver, December of 2020. If I had a microphone that wasn't connected, I'd drop it. Greg uh, uh, J says it's hilarious. It is. I'd say it's even Hitlerific. Uh, let us scroll down and see more of this. Now, this is Cyberfrog versus Wolverine. This appears in the book. But we changed it and we made it Wolverine. Wolverine. So it's not, we are not uh, infringing on Marvel's copyright. It's Wolverine. It's enti an entirely different character. And I cut his ears off. Wolverine. 
This is the earliest Cyber Frog artwork ever. You guys uh, complete with notes here. Complete with notes. This is Cyber Frog Frogapalooza. All of the stuff that I did that was complete shit is in here. Here's an, a complete issue of Cyber Frog. Complete unseen issue of Cyber Frog here. Complete with my notes. You know. First appearance of Heather Swain. Right there, Heather Swain. It's magnificent stuff. And we scroll down. This is like 64 pages of quality hardcover. This is a hardcover. This is a hardcover book. Uh, and here's like, I'm actually printing a handwritten letter that I wrote to Trent back then. Dig this pink ink, buddy. Hype, yo. Here's some assorted stuff as well as a Cyberfrog ad for Creed number one. I hope I'm not too late. If I am, don't worry. I'll find some place to put it. Your anal cavity. I've got a couple new pages of Vortex. Matt keeps getting better and better. That's Matt Martin. That one panel on page 12 with a station wagon parked outside is uh, a house egad. Anyway, prepare to draw fuzzy buzzard. Whip out your pencil, tie your arm behind your back, and blindfold yourself. It's total cake. The stupider he looks, the better. There we go. Until Creed gets a crew cut, make mine heroin. Heroin? Shit. Uh, more stuff like this. Here's the afterword. And again, I write these afterwards, and I try to draw a tear if I could. I'm, I'm mostly uh, somebody who draws frogs. Uh, but if I can manipulate you emotionally, I want to do that as well. And there you have it, after you've read all this. And there you have it. The infancy of Cyberfrog, no refunds. So that's important right there, no refunds. I'm not sure what a young 19-year-old me would have thought had he seen that all of the cheap Xerox paper and big pens he was drawing this filth with would eventually be published in a hardcover tome, honoring it as timeless, as a timeless curiosity for future generations. Frankly, he probably would have gotten balloon-headed and conceited. Thank goodness that time has passed and I've grown into the kind of legendary genius that can take this kind of thing with humility. I thank Trent Canuga for preserving most of this stuff. It is really great to have seen it again, and I was thrilled to present it to you. It felt like a party, like a circus, like a frogapalooza. Ethan Manskyver, December 20th, or December 2020, a few hours after having written the intro. And that's true. Just want to make sure that the timeline is accurate. I mean, just great. Like this is quality content. You know, you're not getting this with the, uh, you know, other, you know, SJW creators. You're getting it with me. It's with me. What's this? Oh, this is the cover. The, the cover turned out great, too. Look at this. Yes. It's like Lollapalooza, except with Cyberfrog. That is, that is great writing. That was great writing there. So this is the actual, this is the hardcover edition of Cyberfrog Frogapalooza zine. If you backed uh, the $200 or the $100 edition, any of the executive editions, this book is coming with your hardcover. It's going to be a nice little addition to uh, your collection. And again, I, you know, this is my, I, you know, I had to write my artist bio, my author's bio here myself. And that appears here as well. Ethan Van Skyver is a 28-year veteran of the comic book industry. He is and has been called the world's most charming and disarming, elegant and eloquent, though humble man. He's a great big Star Wars fan and a trusted member of the media on his YouTube channel, Comic Artist Pro Secrets. He is the super CEO, president, chief creative officer, dictator for life of all caps comics, and the creator of Cyberfrog and Rainbow the Brute. Born in Provo, Utah on September the 3rd, 1974, he nevertheless considers himself a New Jersey native where he lives in a pretty nice bomb shelter deep in the darkest part of the Pine Barrens with his wife, Andrea, three kids, Hunter, Kaylee, and Ava. Those who have claimed that he is a fat pie eater are not technically wrong, although Ethan has pointed out that 2XL isn't necessarily considered fat by most people. The important thing is that he is a human sunbeam, beloved and cherished by all. Warm yourself in his rays. This is creation for it is good, warts and all. I'll bet you guys wish that you backed us now. I'll bet that you guys wish that you backed it. I gave you all the time in the world to back it, and you didn't do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let me see what goes on with you guys. Twitter trash says boring. Twitter trash. I don't know what you want me to do. Backflips? How could you call that boring? Tuna Watts Studio says stop watching the Star Wars holiday special for this. Well, you can get back to it. I mean, I you know, I'm not going to sing. I mean, that's the holiday special is really, really good. It's good. It's worth watching. I watch it twice a year, you know, uh, around Christmas. I really like it. <laughs> All right, let me read some super chats from you guys. And thanks for sending them. Thank you so much for sending me super chats at this special time of the year. It makes me feel happy. Uh, it makes me go, wow, they really do care. Uh, Wolverine from the Philippines, says Sean Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Uh, Job of the Cucks here for five pounds. He says, thank you, EVS, for these streams. I lost so much weight watching you. You never fail to put me off my food. Job of the Cuck. Uh... <laughs> thank you for actually paying to insult me for once. Lord Blackwind says, uh, for $10, thank you for the content. Oh, I read that. Thank you so much, Lord Blackwind. Uh, me no say. Uh, says, look at the rocks rack in the Biden shill video. Those things are porn star big. Uh, Z is obviously in the middle of Zier's transition. Oh, really? Is that right? Do you think the uh, the rock is transitioning? I had no idea. Neon Ecstasia says, looking forward to your girthy stallion. Yeah, I know. You know, girthy stallions. Ride them. Uh, my girthy stallion, thick, veiny. It's a rough ride. You put it away wet. Uh, Astral Walker says, Uncle E, how would Cyberfrog fare against Lady Death? Uh, I don't know. I think he'd uh, be able to hold out. Uh, thoughts on Coffin Comics in general? I like it. I mean, I really like uh, uh, everything that Brian Polito is doing. I think that guy's a genius. He is a really good marketer. He's a... Uh, a cross between, he is a cross between Elvira and Stan Lee, but a man, you know, uh, but a man. But he is like that. He's this horror host, comic book promoter. Got a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of charisma. That's why he sells his books, you know. That's how he's always succeeded is just being a big, bigger than life personality. I always thought he looked a little like Richard Simmons, but like in a good way, like cool. You know, he looks like a cool version of Richard Simmons. Adrian Stone says, is your accountant still telling you to burn money like Brewster's Millions? Uh, no, I think that van did it. <laughs> that van was the, I don't just spend any more money. Jesus Christ, that van was expensive. And by the way, we've only driven it three times. Like it's just sitting there in the driveway. A lot of people are saying, hey, we want to do the uh, designs on the van. I'll, I'll probably get that to happen pretty soon. You know? Yeah. No, I'm not leasing it. I need it. I need the van. I just don't need it right this second. I need I need the van in four months. I don't need it right now. You know, that's the problem. So it's going to sit there for a while. Um, Junkie McCastle. Uh, oh, no, I read that one. Eric Peterson says, race swapped Archie is Fat Albert. Holy shit. You're right about that. Well, hold on a second, because uh, there's no Betty and Veronica and Fat Albert. Or maybe there are, but they're just passed out from sedatives. Jesus, God. I mean, the more you look into things, the darker it gets. Mike Murphy uh, read that. G-Funk Palace uh, read that. Metal Movies and Brewski says, Back Butch Cleaver, Stretch Goals End on New Year's. Uh, Cecil's here. Cecil, uh, says that shirt and earring combo Christmas is canceled. Dude, I gotta get Cecil in here. Cecil, are you still awake? I'm looking at the chat. Can I send you the link? Yeah. Chief Funk Palace says, can you find a breakdown more woke commercials? Well, I did, you know, Chief Funk Palace says, here's $5. So you can buy a box of Ritz. No, thank you. I'm chicken in a biscuit. Now I'm never eating Ritz again. 
not until they straighten out. Nabisco is right out the window. Nabisco's garbage now. That means Oreo cookies are the same. You can't eat Oreos anymore. Anna's, Anna's in here. Hey, Anna. She says he said he was going to bed. Yeah, right. Like he has a bed. Ted Olson says, any chance of putting warts and all back up? Seemed to shut down with no warning, and I was going to spend up big. That sucks. No, I gave I gave a warning. I, I warned everybody about it. I don't want to. I want to keep the print run limited, and like we were right on the border of breaking that print run, so you know I took it down. But there will be warts and all books available on eBay, and I am printing a soft cover version. You know. I don't see Cecil in the chat. I got people yelling at me saying, we need more Cecil and Malin on your show. Yeah, I talked to Malin. I had Malin. I went on the Shane Davis show and John Malin was in there. It was pretty nice. It's good to talk to John Malin. You know, it's uh, good to see an old friend. It's like talking to an old friend. But, you know, those... uh. It was rare. I mean, it was like uh, it was like Simon and Garfunkel in uh, Central Park, you know, that concert. It's rare. It's beautiful when it happens, but you know, it's uh, it's yesterday's dream. Yeah, I don't know what he's got against me, just because I bet against him living. Uh, Lawrence D says, so when will we get it? Tick tock, tick tock. You're going to get it pretty soon. I'm, you know, look, the books are going to print. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, the warts and all books are going to print. The only one that's not going to print yet is unforgettable tales. I got to get Kyle to color it. Unforgettable tales three has not been colored yet. I'm like, Kyle, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm not feeling so good. I'm like, okay, well, how about, how about if I send you $6,000? Will that make you feel better? Get to work, Kyle. Kyle, just ask me for money. I will give it to you. I need you to work. I need you to color things. Uh, uh, Ken Fu says, uh, need mail in the critic's opinion. No, we don't. We don't need his opinion. Not at all. Who cares what John Mellon has to say about warts and all? Uh, Robert Romano says, Ethan, I launched comicsgate.org over 100 creators, their projects listed and over 18,000 videos posted. Enjoy. Hashtag comicsgate. Wow. Good for you. Comicsgate.org, everyone. Yeah. Kyle got COVID a little while ago. I think Kyle got COVID a year ago and it's still with him. Charlie's London was the first super chat of the night. She says, Hey, uncle Lee, just wanted to let you guys know Charlie's London is in its last 24 hours. Oh, God bless you for supporting me, and God bless Comicsgate. God bless you, Charlie's London. You put up with a lot. I don't understand. Charlie's London gets a little bit of hate from people. I think it's just because she's a girl. Uh, but she uh, she did a great job. I mean, look, you know, she utilized Comicsgate exactly right. Tuna Watt Studio says that this chat is just as good as the Star Wars Holiday Special. I take that as a compliment. Peppermint Oil Capsule says Frogapalooza soft cover someday. Yeah, we'll do that. Brad Frederick, uh, Brad Frederick says, do you have a favorite Christmas movie? Yes, it's The Homecoming, uh, which is The Waltons. I always like The Waltons because, uh, it, you know, it took place during the Great Depression. Uh, and I imagine that Grandpa was probably a Nazi sympathizer. Elizabeth was probably a communist, young communist. Mr. Dongs is in the chat. He says, uh, I think it's because this is why Charlie's London gets trouble. I think it's because Charlie Chaplin was an actor, didn't have superpowers or fight crime. Yeah, I know. I honestly, you know, it's like, why are you guys doing a book about Charlie Chaplin? It's like, what are you talking about? Like, that is like, that's official. That's some real shit. And first of all, comic books have been about, you know, they people have done like uh, graphic novel biographies of rock bands and actors and, Stuff like that since time immemorial. It's, comic books have always been like that. And Comicsgate actually got a licensed Charlie Chaplin biography, and people are poo pooing it. You gotta be kidding me. And it's good. It'd be one thing if it wasn't good. If Charlie's London uh, came in here and she got an artist who sucked and, you know, it just didn't look very cool, 
Uh, that the artist is magnificent. I don't know where she found him, but this guy is reproducing 1920s reality right out of thin air. Uh, the artwork looks dynamite. It looks legit. It looks like the best a Charlie Chaplin biography could possibly look. And she did it with, you know, she did it the right way. She engaged with comics gate customers. Uh, she was fun. She was funny. She was kind. She was a good self promoter. She promoted other people. And she did a good book. Now, all she has to do is get it printed and fulfill it. And that is a dynamite, successful, uh, wonderful campaign. She's welcome to come back and do it again. And we got a lot of people who are big talkers, a lot of people who talk a big game uh, and uh, criticize other people. And then when it comes to putting out their own comic books, suddenly they disappear. Their comic books are vaporware. A lot of people like that around here. I'm not naming names. But there are a lot of people like that. Pay attention to yourself. Be supportive of each other. The only person who is allowed to not be supportive of everyone is me. I'm the only one. I made fun of Mike S. Miller again today. Me and Mike are like this close to being friends again. Um, but I, you know, I know that upsets everybody. It, it upsets everybody. A guy, Nasser Rabati, I'm talking to him. I'm nice to people who are nice to me cautious though don't worry guys uh but mike s miller i think sees the writing on the wall he got into an argument with a catholic liberal on uh twitter and that catholic liberal uh i don't know what somehow got linked to me and rainbow brute wanted to pick a fight with me about whether rainbow brute was anti-sjw of course it is and uh but said i was a good christian unlike mike and i pointed out that mike lost his way somewhere along the line Mike is a good Christian, except that, you know, I don't know, even the best of Christians, even the ones in the Bible, didn't recognize Christ, didn't recognize grace when it was right in front of their faces, doubting Thomases. And this is the end result. I had to point out, uh, oh, wait, wrong. Here it is. These are two graphs. I said, we call him Smiller, and he doesn't listen to a word I say anymore, and he doesn't. When he stopped listening to me, he began to fail. Here are some graphs. Okay, so we have some graphs proving the dire consequences of not doing what I say. Uh, so now it's illustrated so that you can see. Uh, Lone Star, tale of a loser, dollars raised. So here's Lone Star 1, heart of the hero. You can see it almost got to 140. Continuing to do what I say, almost 180,000. And then deciding to not do what I say, Lone Star 3, down here with two days left. Now, I think this is, uh, you know, uh, this this uh, chart is now a little bit outdated, but not by much. I think this is still the same, but there aren't two days left. I think he added another 30 days. Good luck. Now, I did a similar graph. Let's, I mean, dollars raised is one thing, but what about backers? What about backers? So here we go. Lone Star tail of a loser backer count. Here's when he was doing what I said, uh, what I told him to do. Uh, this is almost 27, looks like 2,700 backers, roughly. Uh, then he does, does his second book, Listening to Me Still, 3,400 backers roughly. And then he decides to not listen to me and John Malin, not listen to John Malin. Boom, right down here. So you can see this is a, this is a graph here. You can see the trend line. Sometimes looking at graphs is difficult, so it just pays to just look at the trend line, you know, which you can do. It's red. The trend line is red. This green marks the moment of Mike's apostasy. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What am I supposed to do? You know, you can lead a horse to water, but not a jackass. Uh, and then here we go. Uh, we got everybody. Oh, no. Oh. Well, uh, here's Mike. You know, Mike is Mike has unblocked me now officially communication we can talk and it's important that we do talk because i can i want to continue to make fun of him he needs to be able to see me make fun of him so he unblocked me i didn't know he did and i unblocked him right back the talks begin guys i hope you're excited about it i hope you're excited about 2021 it's going to be fun it's going to be really really fun okay so let's see um, Alfred Ortiz says there's a similar graph of, uh, marrying Ethan's ex-wife. I'm afraid I don't get that one. I'm sorry, Alfred. 
Wah, wah. Uh, Ethan, bring out the big vote. Uh, EVS brings out the big vocab. Uh, we need to bring Antonio back. Hmm. Yeah, Antonio could come back if he wants to. I like Antonio. Uh, Sumo Thori says EVS is explaining how graphs work to us. <laughs> I have to. I have to let you know. Now, here we go. This is uh, more mathematics here. Smiller is better than Nasser. Uh, Smiller is, is or no, I'm sorry. No, according to this, Nasser is better than Smiller. Hmm. Uh, Neon Extasia says, so many poop thieves running rampant out there. We got to stop them. Well, let me see. Here's a clue, Ethan. Parachutes. Oh, guys. Oh, that was brutal. Sean Hollywood says, is there a chart of kumquats stolen to comic sales gain? Or wait, is there a chart of kumquats stolen to comic sales generated? There isn't yet. Uh, that data has not been uh, calculated, but we have some good, some people who are good at making graphs here. If you want to do that, you could, uh, you could work that out. Uh, Trencher 1375 says, I got brand from Antonio here in Norway and it's freaking awesome, man. It is awesome. No kidding. Uh, Antonio and Kanan White are fantastic. A fantastic team. You know, these guys are great. Let's see. Sheila Alien says, where's my frog hoodie that costs the same as four outfits? Sheila, I refuse to believe <laughs> that your outfits cost uh, a fourth, a quarter of what that hoodie costs. I refuse to believe it. There's no possible way that's true. Uh, Captain Chokeout says, Bryce, LOL, listen, he can come back. I'll say this, though. Let me see him in person and watch the ride. Why? What happened? What happened, Captain Chokeout? I feel like I'm missing a lot of stuff here. Let me see. Antonio the Guido says, I haven't gotten my brand. Uh, here is a tweet of trash off topic, but important things are going to get lit soon. I hope everyone's prepared. I have two weeks of supplies minimum devil strike. Uh Oh, tweet of trash. What is going on, man? What are you predicting is going to happen? Is it uh Captain Chogout says he's a piece of shit. Whoa. Whoa. You know, um, a lot of hatred in the chat tonight. Choke out versus Bryce. That sounds like a good wrestling match. Uh, six illustrate says, so what's 2021 going to look like for the comic book industry? Uncle Ethan, uh, it's going to look pretty weird. Uh, DC comics is going to get more and more awful. Uh, like the stuff that you're seeing there, the comic books that they print are going to be fewer and fewer, more incompetent. There will be moments of brightness. Okay. You're, you're going to have some books, uh, that look great. If there's a three Joker sequel, if that actually happens. Uh, that will be great, but most of the books are going to be shit. They're just going to be shit, and nobody over there knows what they're doing anymore. Uh, eventually, and will it be in 2021? Possibly. Possibly. Eventually, at and is just going to close it right down. Uh, or at and will sell even better. This is the best case scenario for DC Comics. at and just sells Warner Media. You know. Let's get somebody else to buy it. In which case, DC could live another, uh, you know, few days, I guess. DC is going to Random House, says Dude Bark. That would be great. <laughs> that would be a really good move. Uh, Three Jokers was meh. Hmm. Uh, they're, they're going to be shit. A glowing endorsement from former DC great EVS. Thank you, Adrian Stone. But I mean, to be fair, you know, what I'm doing with Cyberfrog is going to be awesome. I don't even care what they're doing. I don't care. We only care about what comic skaters are doing. Uh, in 2021, you've got Cyberfrog Warts and All coming out first. You've got Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet coming out after that. Then uh, you've got Snowman. Snowman's going to come out much sooner than its anticipated date. Matt's just crushing it. And I'm telling you, Matt is hungry. He's getting pages in. I think I have some new pages to show if you want to see. Uh, and then we're going to launch Cyberfrog 3 probably in the autumn. And then we're going to release Rainbow Brute in December uh, with Cool Story Bro. 
you guys, uh, you don't even know how good life is going to be. Your boy Zach wrote me a script. I mean, you're going to be kidding me. You, you got to be kidding me. Hold on a second here. Your boy Zach can write scripts pretty quickly here. Uh, he's writing his cool story, bro. Story. Uh, this is the Prince and the P. Uh, the vizier rips off the sheet from the top mat mattress to reveal a massive, crusty old piss stain. The prince is in shock. Oh, really? Gasp. The bed is covered in a massive, crusty piss stain. Cut to the prince being executed by guillotine in the courtyard later that day. The princess runs off in tears. The queen collapses into the king's chest in grief. The vizier gloats. The crowd reaction is oddly ebullient. And then we cut back to uh, Rainbow Brute here. So Zach has Rainbow Brute and Shiro Pocket as kind of the uh, wraparound. You don't have to do that. I wouldn't you know, advise that people do that. But <sighs> You know. Yeah, Zach is uh, Zach's doing his thing. You know, Zach is doing his thing, uh, and I'm excited about including Zach in this book. Cool story, bro. Even though he wrote about urine, I don't know why he wrote about urine. All right, hold on a second here. Let me find. Uh, let me find the great Matt Martin. Uh oh, I sent these to Kelsey to color. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys haven't even seen these yet. Let me back out a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, I sent these to Kelsey. I don't know if Kelsey's going to do it. I'm not sure Kelsey even responded to me, but I hope he's going to do it. Okay, let me show you these. And you guys, I mean, I want your honest criticism of these pages. If you don't like these pages, I want you to tell me. This is Matt Martin's Snowman, pages one through three. Uh, you ain't gonna see me coming. You got these two crackers sit, sitting here by the fire telling a story. You know, great art. Matt Martin, ladies and gentlemen. What do you guys think of this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, dude. Hold on. Let me see if I can blow this up. You ain't going to see me coming. Dogs. Black dog. Look at all these dead like souls just floating around in the background. Is Damn, dude. Bloody hands in the foreground. I think that snowman, like this is the uh, dream... I don't know what it is. Oh, this is the dark vision. Oh, this is the dark vision of Daniel Elkhart, a black dog, and he falls into his mouth, and inside the mouth is hell and the torment of a million souls and the white men that black dog has ripped to shreds. This is the dark vision that he must uncover, and that dark vision is, is the snowman. Yeah, I'm sending those to Kelsey to get colored. You know, it's going to be pretty great. Uh, Sir Angus Fungus says, piss don't smell like sweat. It smells worse than sweat, doesn't it? What would you rather sleep in? Someone's sweat or someone's urine? I mean, it goes both ways. Like sometimes like you can work up a disgusting, stinky pit sweat. And you can reek like onions. You know, I mean, it, it can be bad. It can be bad. But that, I'd still rather smell that than someone's piss. You know, I don't I don't know, guys. 
neither. You guys would you guys don't want to make a choice there. Yeah. Urine is sterile. Hmm. Uh G Gravak says comic artist pro secret. Comic artist pro secrets. Thoughts on inch high comic guy? Is that what you're calling your penis? I don't have any thoughts about it. None. Uh, both smell uh, great, according to Comic Pro, says Lord Blackwin. Hey, cool. Look at your avatar. That's like a classic. I forgot about, I forgot that I drew that. That's an old piece of uh, uh, that's an old piece of artwork by me. I think that's Earth 2 Superman. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Let me see what's going on in Super Chats. Cyberfrog versus Evil Ernie crossover when? Uh, never. Uh, Timothy W. Haskins II says, Hey, E, Polito is from Jersey, but you didn't know that one, Pie Guy. He seems like he would be from Jersey to me. But he lives in Arizona now. I mean, I've known him since the, like, since I first started, you know, that guy was a something else, man. He like, he really knew how to promote stuff. Full of mischief for $5 says uncle Ethan. I got to meet you at Philly comic con four or five years ago. And you made my day. You did a cool Hal Jordan for me. Hey, that's great. Philly comic con. You a local boy. You live near me. Um, Yeah. I still got Captain Choke out threatening Antonio Bryce. I have no idea what's going on. You know, what is going on, dude? Captain Choke out. <laughs> yes, you do, Job of the Cuck. That is a lie. You're like one of my biggest fans. Uh, let's see. You apologize for meeting that man, Ethan. Who? Bring Choke out on and ask him. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if I want to get into a big thing. I don't know if I want to get into a big thing about wanting to beat up Antonio Bryce, honestly. I like Antonio Bryce. I think Antonio is probably mad at me, though. You know. All right. So Captain Choke out says, I've already said more than once. Hold on a second. More than once. Mm. I missed it. Let's see. Is there going to be a comic skate auction before the end of 2020? I don't know because uh, somebody said, no, Ethan, like winter auction is supposed to be in January. You already had a winter auction. You did winter auction. January of 2020. So I didn't realize that. I forgot. I thought it was my responsibility to host a winter auction in December, October, November, December, but quite right. Winter auction should be in January. So I can be lazy. I don't have to do it right now. I can do it in a month, you know, which is sounds good to me. That sounds like a good plan. You know, I did that auction and it's like there were only 600 people in here and I could tell it's like, oh my gosh, this is a problem. And then the next day, my chat was broke down. So there's no way we could do an auction. The chat wasn't coming up. What's going on here? We got sketch therapy. What's sketch therapy doing? Everybody's talking about sketch therapy being angry. I don't see him at all. Oh, here he is. Fuck Antonio Bryce, Comic Arts Pro Secrets. He sucks. Tenables. Why don't you spell things properly, Sketch? Is it because you can't put a comment in there without? You made a whole stream blocking comics get over Tenable. Uh, do I need to spam this? I, Sketch, I'm going to tell you something. You don't need to worry about what anybody else says or does about Comics Gate. You don't need to. You can personally, as a consumer, if you choose, walk away. But Comics Gate is not a clubhouse with doors. Comics Gate is a phenomenon. It's in the air. It's a situation. 
it is a situation. I like that. Comics gate is a situation. And those of us who find ourselves in this situation are free to call ourselves comics gate. Now your concern is Ethan, I'm a fan of your show. I think that's what sketch therapy is saying. He's saying, Ethan, I'm a fan of your show. And I don't want to see people that have abused you without your knowing it. And by the way, I don't know it. When people talk shit about me, I don't always know. I don't pay attention. I live on a, a, a sunbeam. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what people say about me. It's better that way. <laughs> it's way better for me to not know what people are saying about me. Way better. Uh, so sketch therapy is sitting there going, these guys dissed you and I feel like, uh, I don't want to see them. I don't want to see those traitors around you. I hear you sketch. I understand. But if they're over there, not bothering anybody, you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about gatekeeping comics gate. That's the last thing we want to do. We want comics gate to be big and full of people that we disagree with. I came to that conclusion this year. I think it came with age. Some people have said, Ethan, you look like you're 80 years old. That's because of all of you. <laughs> you still look like a spring chicken. And it wasn't just my beak. I looked like a spring chicken. And then you all drove me nuts. Especially you, Sketch. You aged me 20 years. But I came to this realization. It's not just that I look older. Okay. Uh, it's that I've matured a little bit. And now I don't need to fight with people. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. What's important is that I win. These are the conversations that I have with my wife, attempting to demonstrate my own maturity. Honey, it's important that I win. It doesn't matter that everybody else loses. They're allowed to win or lose or whatever happens to them. It's only important that I win. So uh, whatever these guys are doing and saying and whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're still winning over here. We're still having fun over here. We don't, it doesn't matter what they do or say. You need to just be happy. <laughs> you know, if somebody is true comic skate, if they win. Yes. Look at Charlie's London. She won. She won, so she's very much comics gate. <laughs> it aged you worse than being president. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I've just put on weight, but I'm going to take it off this year. Yeah, I had a talk with Andrew about it, like a serious talk. And I was just like, uh, she's like, what would I do if I lost you? What would I do? She's like, you know, like we have kids and all this stuff. She's like, you got to get, you got to get in shape. You got to get healthy. And I was like, in all this time, I was sitting there looking at it as though it were a question of my vanity, my personal beauty, which I clearly, uh, I'm content. I'm quite content being a fat slob. If the question is, do you like the way you look? The answer is yes, I do very much. But the real question is, are you healthy enough to live long enough uh, to provide for your family? And that is a much more serious question. How is my heart doing? You know, uh, so I, I gotta, I gotta lose weight. I've got to, I'm a, I'm just fat, fat bastard, handsome, but fat. So, uh, it is, uh, <laughs> beauty at every size. Uh, let's see. I think sketch, <laughs> no, <laughs> Mr. Dongs. I, uh, I like sketch, but I don't want to put sketch on. Not right now. Not while he's angry about Antonio Bryce. Full of mischief. Two dollars says, "Yes, I'm from Mount Laurel. You like strawberry rhubarb? Well, how about that? We're neighbors. That's great. That's very cool. Uh, no, I don't like strawberry rhubarb that much." Uh, Dorby says, "Mike conspired to do maximum harm to your business and reputation." Oh, this is Smiller here. We got a ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Dorby. He'd be gloating over the ashes of all caps if he'd succeeded. Don't give him another chance to burn your ha house down from the inside. It's got to be clear by now to you. If not to him. That Mike is stupid. And I say that with all love. Christian love. 
Mike is gullible. Mike is dumb. Mike is prideful. Mike is uh, arrogant. And Mike's a sucker. And there is no possible way that Mike could hurt me ever in any way other than my heart, other than, you know, emotionally. That's the only way Mike could hurt me. On the other hand, (laughs) let's not turn things around the other way and examine it from that direction. I could devastate Mike. I could destroy his whole world. But I choose not to because I'm a man of compassion, of warmth, of love. Braden Dykstra says he's got a hot wife. So do I. Andrew is glorious. But Mike is very dumb. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about Mike. I'm not worried about Mike hurting me. Mike is Elmer Fudd to my Bugs Bunny. He doesn't realize that. That's what's funny about him. Uh, Mr. Dr. U2 says, how many vans can a van skyver van if a van skyver could sky vans? One. It's expensive. It's in my driveway. Absolutely true. All right, let's hope Mike's in the chat. That's it. Mike really isn't smart enough to take Ethan down. He's proven himself a fool many times over. That is exactly right. And hopefully at this point, uh, our friend Mike has learned to not even bother trying. No more live streams called Lies the Pie Man Told You and things like that. Because everything I say is true. I don't tell lies. I might be wrong about some things. Like I might say that Bitcoin is going to crash to one dime, you know, in the next uh, five months. And I'm wrong. Like it, it goes up. But I never lie. I'm always truthful. I always give the, the painful truth. Oh, good. Mike is here. Uh, Mike told Ethan to buy Bitcoin at 5000 And that is the that is the example. Thank you, Mike. You are right. You are right. I should have bought Bitcoin at 5000 and gotten the fuck out. Holy cow, dude. Can you do that? I mean, how does Bitcoin even work? You know, are you allowed to just go in and buy Bitcoin? Is there some kind of dance that you have to do to buy Bitcoin? Because you told me that you're not even allowed to buy a full Bitcoin. You're not even allowed to. Not at once. You have to join a club and wait till it's your turn. Sounded like too much trouble to me. Justin Miller says, Bitcoins are good if your currency is garbage. Yeah, well, that might be, that might turn out to be a thing. You know. (laughs) Bitcoin dance the dance of what the fuck. No, no, no. There's something that you got to do. You got to join a club or something. You can't just go, uh, yeah, I'd like to invest in Bitcoin. I'll take three of them. You know, you can't do that. You can only, they only let you buy a little bit at a time. Uh, Smiller is the idiot in stocks getting rotting, rotting veggies thrown at him. He deserves, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't put Mike in a stock and throw rotten vegetables at him. Mike corrects himself. He says, no, I said, you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. That's not what you said. You said you can't. I realize you don't have to buy a fool anything. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen Biggins in here. Uh, Biggins uh, is busy being rich. We haven't seen Biggins in a while. I don't know. I like doing live streams. It takes a little bit for me to get in here. I don't want to do them too often. I don't want to bore you guys. And and here's the thing about me in a live stream. I put on a show. I had a show ready for you. Now, now we're winding down and we're just chatting, but I had a great show. You have to admit, I weaved in from topic to topic. I did self-promotion. I promoted Snowman. I showed you warts and all. I made like three different shit jokes. Told you about uh, commercials that are woke. You guys learned a lot from me today. 
Diamond Tranquil says more short vids. Yeah, no, I do. I mean, that's that's what I do every day is a short vid. Uh, Mike says, oh, you mean you can't start an account and buy a ton? Yeah, correct. Why not? And what is a ton? Uh, better than school, says Jason Gallagher. That's right. Best live stream on YouTube. Thank you, DL. DL. Go. Sometimes you guys have names that I recognize, but I don't know what they mean yet. And then I realized later that I was stupid and they mean something else. EVS equals a ton. <laughs> uh, yes, we learned that your van is still naked, says Eastland Burkholder. Yeah, I'm going to have somebody design it. I think I want to put Cyberfrog on it and I want to put the uh, all caps comics logo on it. I'm really proud of it. It's a beautiful van. Um, I do like it a lot. I got to drive it. Andrea said, make sure that you drive it like every other day, though. Even if it's just around the block, you can't let it just sit there. I said, I will. I will drive that around. I do like driving trucks. Uh, here's a good question. Did Liam refund you? No, he didn't. And he ran. And not only that, I told Micah Curtis, I said, you tell Liam to refund me. And then they all, but everyone gets really quiet when you do that. I don't care. I don't, I don't want, the, I don't need the money. I did it on principle. You know, my whole thing about the refund was, uh, look, you can't be striking people's YouTube channels. You can't do that. You know, Liam was, Liam sent me a message. He was just like, I'm going to take down anti-comics gate. I'm going to leave him in a smoking crater, Ethan. I'm like, don't leave people alone, dude. I, I realize that they're critics and they're making fun of you, but you feed them. Stop feeding them and making them want to make fun of you more. If you give people a reaction when they're making fun of you, they will continue to make fun of you. Uh, and Liam likes to give people a reaction. So he struck all these channels. He struck Mike's channel. He struck Nasser's channel. And I found that intolerable. And it's not because I like Nasser or Mike, you know. Indeed, look at my relationship with Mike. It sucks. But I, I can't I can't support that because once you, uh, you know, Liam's whole thing, like, I'm going to strike your channel. Well, once you do that, once you kind of make it so that you can issue false DMCs or you have thin skin and you're, you know, sending community guidelines strikes against people because they're making fun of you, then prepare to have it done to you. And I don't want it to be done to me. So because I don't want it to be done to me, I have to stand up for everyone. And if it happens to one of my enemies, and I'm not saying Mike or Nasser is my enemy, they're not. But if it were to happen to one of my worst enemies, I would not applaud. I would not cheer. That would be something a dirt worm would do. Uh, I would not, you know, uh, make fun of somebody who lost their Twitter account at all. Why? Hey, this is how we feed our families. So uh, having told Liam, that he needed to remove those strikes. And Liam told me, no, I said, then refund me. Uh, because if that's the last bit of power that I have, uh, I would like to, uh, utilize that power to get you to do the decent courteous thing. And, uh, he did not refund me, but he did remove the strikes on Mike and Nasser's channel. I removed my quest, my request for a refund. And I think that's that, you know, that's fine. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, Edwin uh, did strike my channel once. And here's the thing, like, you know, I think when Edwin struck my channel, it was because he didn't realize how bad that was. Edwin Boyette has always, he's like, he flirted with Comicsgate, you know, he's more into these sort of parasocial relationships than he is actually aware of YouTube etiquette. Okay, he would think YouTube etiquette was silly. Uh, if you uh, if you talk to him. So, yeah, he issued a strike against my channel because I made a, a response to one of his videos about me. <laughs> and uh, I uh, tore him a new one. I, I fought the uh, strike. The strike came down and then I made fun of him, uh, which is what you're supposed to do in those situations. YouTube agreed with me. Uh, yeah, Dorby says uh, you can make a Coinbase account and buy Bitcoin today. You can put 25K in per day. 
uh, or more with a direct deposit and wait a few days to clear. Buy and sell at your whim. Fees are not low, though. I'm not interested. <laughs> even if even if I could go back in time, I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. I don't want to be a Bitcoin investor. That's not who I want to be. Uh, yeah, Doug never did that either. Preston, though. Yeah, Doug, Doug inspired other people to do it, though, Mike. Doug cheered people on. And that's just as bad. You can't do that. You got to come down on hard on people to do that. You know, you got to condemn it. Uh, Preston did it and Doug said, good. It's about time Manly Man came to... Fuck that, dude. That is just, it's just as dark. You know, I would stand up for you and your channel. I would pull whatever power I had, any resources, any power that I had to fix your problems, I would do it if that kind of thing happened to you. And you remember that. You will remember that, Mike. Because I demand that same courtesy from the people around me. Those are the, that's fair's fair. You know, those are the rules. Adrian Stone says, I worry about some super fans, present company included. For what reason? You know, Edwin faded into politics. Edwin came back. Edwin, I, I had a nice interaction with Edwin, a couple of nice interactions with him last week. Uh, here's the thing, like, yeah, War Campaign wreaked havoc uh, on Comicsgate, creating a lot of anger, a lot of confusion, a lot of fights with people that didn't necessarily want to be fighting, weren't really predisposed to fight, a lot of confusion. Uh, and uh, they're gone. So it didn't take much. I just had to kind of go. You guys don't exist anymore. And then you don't. Where are they? They're gone. So uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, anybody who wants to come back and play fair, I like it. I'm all for that. Captain Chokeout says crypto coin is a fool's game. Well, I mean, you say that, but I mean, again, if you play it the right way, if Mike were to cash out now, you know, maybe he'd be a smart guy, but he won't cash out now. He's going to. He's going to wait till it crashes again. And then he'll be like, it's going to come back up. You know, a uh, math house Rex says, blimey up early UBS. Yeah. I just, I, like I said, I've been working my, my fingers to the bone. I, I you know, I've got to get, I want to get warts and all done into the printer. All of that stuff needs to come uh, in. And it, you know, uh, it, it's just a matter of me writing. Writing is not something that I really like to do. I like to draw. When I sit down to write, I'm, I'm like, oh, I have to write something. I don't like it. But when I'm actually writing, I do like it. You know, I, I get into it. I enjoy writing it, uh, writing. I enjoy expressing myself. I enjoy making my persona come out in my little, uh, the paragraphs that I write for my books. I did all of that today and yesterday just to make sure the books uh, were done so they could, you know, come out. Uh, here we go. Here's Mike. Bitcoin uh, will hit 300K by this time next year. That'll be amazing, Mike. And I'm not even going to say, no, it won't. I'm just going to say, that'll be amazing, Mike. Your writing is good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just want to have fun. You know, I hope the book is fun to read. Because, I mean, it's it's old stuff. You know, it's all the old cyber frog stuff. And, uh... You know, I go back and uh, I, I'm going back and looking at it again and then and just going through kind of the memories of the, the 90s, what it was like was kind of emotional. You know, I definitely felt it. I remember the disappointment, the real disappointment of having to abandon Cyberfrog and then move on to D.C. And it did. It just felt like a big change in life and, and moving on and, and doing something else. And then while I was at D.C. for 20 years, I couldn't imagine going back to Cyberfrog. It was just, this is what I was doing now. Um, let's see here. Slash and burn theory. I, I need to crack open blood, honey. It's still in the pack. Oh, I, man, I want you to read it. I think it's great. I got a lot of negative reviews from people who hate me, but I know for a fact blood, honey's great. <laughs> I just know it is. I mean, it's really, really, really good. I know it's good because 
your boy Zach read it. Uh, he didn't want to read it at all. And he read it and he came back to me like, holy shit, dude, this is really fucking great. Like, I wasn't expecting this. Like, Zach couldn't get over it. You know, Jason Gallagher says, Warts and All looks a lot better than I expected. No, it is a, be I promise you, it's a beautiful, beautiful package. And it's got, I mean, the, look, the books in it, it's the early Cyberfrog stuff. Um, so it should be fun to read, but it isn't good, you know, by any stretch. It's me learning how to do comics, but it is, uh, the, we, it's the best possible presentation for all that material. That's the promise I made to you guys. I was going to, I was going to put it together in the best possible way that it could, uh, so that it'll look good on your shelves. It'll be a nice object for you to have. And if you want to read it, it's going to be a fun read. You know, it's definitely gonna be a fun read. Um, EVS, what is your position on pet monkeys? I'm for them. I would like a marmoset. If I could have a marmoset of my own, tiny monkey that eats grapes, like holds a single grape in a hand in his hands like this. I would have him on my shoulder right now. Uh, Aquarium says, can you talk about collaborating with Jordan Peterson? Yeah, I, I can. Um, it was pretty cool. Jordan Peterson uh, showed up in my world at the time when I was just beginning to be swarmed by SJWs and was terrified. And I didn't want to do anything too dramatic. I didn't want to get in more trouble, you know, than I already was. Um, but my friend Greg Hurwitz introduced us and, uh, Jordan was talking to me and I was like, look, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to illustrate. I can't believe this is how I was, but I mean, I was, I was like, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to, to draw your book. I still am working for DC comics. These people are trying to kill me, you know? And he said, geez, you can't let these mobbers back you into a corner, Ethan. And, uh, the way he said that, I still remember that, that meant a lot to me. He got on a he, he gave me a, a talk, a talking to a uh, Skype chat to kind of pick me up a little bit. And I just said, I'm going to do your book. Cause I, you know, uh, what the hell? And I asked DC's permission. DC said, yes. And I did it. Uh, I wasn't paid very well. Uh, but the money that I got from that book paid for, uh, our wedding, Andrew and my wedding, we just took the money and threw a big party for our friends. Uh, at a at the uh, Tropicana Casino in in Atlantic City, we just rented this Italian restaurant. It was just a really good time, and uh, that was it. Uh, Jordan Peterson did a whole lot of stuff with the artwork. He he put it everywhere. I should have gotten a royalty off it. I didn't realize the book was going to sell so well. So uh, that was that. Jordan Peterson's doing a sequel, or he did a sequel. They they came to me and asked me to do it. I wanted to do it just to have done it but I couldn't afford to do it. I just couldn't afford to do it. It was too much work for too little money. And that made me sad. I think Mike did it. I could be wrong. Mike, are you the artist of the new Jordan Peterson book? Did that work out or no? Uh, just, uh, yeah, it wasn't enough money for me at this point. Like I priced myself out of every art ma market, you know, other than just working for myself as much as I want to do it for the glory and plaudits, working that hard, working for a month and a half, and maybe Mike could do it quicker, uh, would be, uh, no, Mike didn't do it. I don't know who did it then. Yeah. Oh, Jordan Peterson wanted applications. He wanted people to apply. Yeah. I had, I had Jordan Peterson's daughter calling me up saying, you know, my dad's sick and he wants you to do the book. And I was still like, I can't, I'm busy. What? Get Mike to do it, but even Mike wouldn't do it. Akiram says, you should collab with Jordan on a comic. I don't think he's interested. And I'm not interested either. I just, I'm doing my own thing. I got, you know, cyber fraud. There are a lot of people who I'd like to spend time with, a lot of famous people who I guess I'd like to collaborate with uh, in, in one way or another, but uh, I'm doing my own thing and I'm doing very, very well on my own. There's no reason to interrupt this flow that I've got going. You know, Cyberfrog is what it is. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I'm happy doing Cyberfrog. <laughs> no, the frog tank isn't gone. It's still there. You know, I got to get, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I feel bad about it. Uh, Michael Malice wants you to do his graphic novel too. No, he wants me to find him an artist. 
I don't, he never said, I want you to draw your, my graphic novel. I wouldn't do it. I can't, I, these guys can't afford me. They can't, I, you know, what am I going to do? I'm making, uh, in profits, like a quarter of a million dollars of cyber frog issue. Now these guys cannot afford me. Uh, let me see, uh, Ethan with the critical drinker on a comic. I like that guy. These are all guys I want to like, you know, hang out with, but uh, here's Mike. Uh, Shad video drops this morning. Is your book launching, Mike? Yeah. That'll be interesting to see. Mm. Mike's got a comic book with uh, Shadiversity, I think they're called. He's called. Uh, and Mike is trying to find a new way, you know, to, to market his comics. The idea of working with another YouTuber, a big YouTuber, to promote your comics is one that, you know, look, uh, they just tried to get Dame Drops to do a comic book, Antonio and Kanan, and that was like one of the biggest bombs. I don't even know what those guys are going to do. That's a catastrophe. And it was completely preventable. Dame Drops was on Antonio Bryce's channel again today. They had 22 people watching. I don't understand why... Antonio isn't on his channel where he's got 5 million subs. I, I don't want, I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't understand it. Mike's got a book uh, and we'll, we'll check it out. We'll see how it does. My guess is uh, it's not going to do that great, but you know, what, what am I going to say? You know? Yeah. Damn did nothing on this channel. Dumb. The unique thing about Comicsgate, you know, and, and what we do here is that everybody here is already predisposed to buy a comic book. You know, it doesn't matter how big a YouTube channel is. What percentage of that channel is prepared to spend $25 on a comic book? Even if it is about the YouTuber himself, his fantasy novels or something like that, what percentage? And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't. It's not everybody can do it. We'll see. Well, I mean, look, uh, the guy does novels. So maybe, hold on, Mr. Dong says, I don't know, Shadowversity has already proven his ability to sell product to his audience on like Dame Drops. That's true, okay. Be interesting to see, guys. Timothy W. Haskins II says, Billy had Greg Hildebrand and Jimmy Palmiotti probably on his show last week. You need to step up your game, pie man. <laughs> you want me to have more stars in here? You want me to have more like uh, comic book people and interview them? I never know what to say to them, uh, you know. Interviewing Mark Wade and Dan Slott and all those guys in the early days of this channel put me off associating with comic book people. I mean, look, I, I'm more interested in hanging out with my friends. Uh, and I, I, you know, I could talk to John Malin and Cecil for hours and hours and hours. We do it. I never get tired of those guys. There's no uh, phony respect. I'm not worried about stepping on their feelings at all at all i do it constantly uh i just have fun with them we have a good rapport so the idea of bringing in some other artist and being like hey tell me about that just boring the piss out of the audience i couldn't care less it's not what i want to do it's not what i want to do with my life uh gek812 says the cyberfrog t-shirts on amphibionics.com look awesome there's Cyberfrog t-shirts on Amphibionics.com? You're kidding me. Hmm. I have to go look and see what they uh, are referring. Let me look right now. I like Amphibionics.com. Amphibionics.com. We need a jingle like that. We don't have enough radio jingles. All right. So EJ Moore just made a website that's like all things Cyberfrog, and it really is pretty. I, I like it. He maintains it. Uh, this is amphibionics.com. Uh, what's in the shop here? eBay store, shirts, hats, and apparel. Let me see where this... Oh, this leads you right to uh, 
Oh, this is fun. This leads you right to uh, the uh, crypto fashion store. I don't have all these shirts. I need this red all caps. This is fucking awesome. That is uh, sweet. What else am I missing? I don't have a chicken fry shirt. Uh, I don't have the Get Wrecked shirt with the J. Lee art. Of course, I've got a million of these, though. I've got a million of these cyber fraud shirts. These are pretty classic. The Phantom Menace shirt really looks good when you wear it out. You could wear the Phantom Menace shirt with a nice black blazer over it. It looks nice. Jeans. It's pretty good. Hmm. EJ, you are the man, dude. You linked everything up. Here's some fan art. First look at the action figure. He's got everything here. <laughs> this is delightful. Here's Heather Swain's stats. I hope it has her measurements. No, just her weight and her height. This is a cool site. I don't know. People should go check it out. Uh, amphibionics.com if you can spell amphibionics yeah EJ's great man he turned in I think he's got four pages in of a heart sick horror and they're just gorgeous <laughs> a blazer okay grandpa I know that that's not what grandpas wear I know because I've seen my peers wear them uh, let me see I wonder if Ethan still has a dream character he would like to work on for a cool million cap maybe I would go back and do Green Lantern again for a million dollars. That would be it. I'd go and I'd do like, I'd be like Frank Miller. You know, Frank Miller's Batman. He came in and he did another Batman book for a million dollars. It's like, that's what it would cost to get me to do Green Lantern again. But that's all it would have to be. It would just, it would have to mean something. It would have to make sense. It would have to make sense. And, you know, doing Green Lantern again would make sense. You know, like 10 years later. Gavin Smith, Ethan sounds depressed. I'm not depressed at all. Why? I'm being quiet. <laughs> what? Well, now it's depressing. I mean, your peers are grandpas. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you hate Hal Jordan? No, I love uh, Hal Jordan. Uh, written by you or Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, I saw that guy. Uh, this guy, Jeff Thorne. When you say Jeff, you mean Jeff Johns, not Jeff Thorne. Jeff Thorne, how weird, man. I was going to do a video about it, but I thought like I would be the only one that was interested in it. Uh, but Jeff Thorne is the new Green Lantern writer over there, and he hates Hal Jordan. He's got a big, long history of making it a point to say, I really hate Hal Jordan. I hate Hal Jordan. I mean, like a hundred times, people are finding tweets of him. I don't, I can't. I don't think I've said I hate Barack Obama a hundred times, but this guy has said I hate Hal Jordan, a fictional character, a hundred times. Why? These characters aren't real. Do you hate Ryan Reynolds? Is that what it is? Uh, what's Heather's cup size? I don't know. I think she's like a C cup. Who knows? Hal equals EVS, it's code. Oh, well, that's a good theory. I like that theory. When you say I hate Hal Jordan, it means I hate Ethan Van Skyver. That's weird. <laughs> you have you've said it a thousand times. I have not said I hate Barack Obama a thousand times. Mr. Dong says this is what happens when heat isn't around. Oh, we got to bring back Hal's Emerald Advancement team. Those weirdos. I was at DC when, like, at the end of their reign of terror, and DC really hated them. It's <laughs> like why they're just a fan club for Green Lantern. No, they're harassers and bullies. Jesus. Okay. Akiram says, is your green lan is your lantern color spectrum an allegory for LGBTQ plus? Uh no. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. Not at all. But it is it, I mean it is pretty gay. There are a lot of things about that that I wish I had changed because some of it just didn't make sense. I mean, you know, Jeff calling it an emotional spectrum really bothered me. It has nothing to do with emotions. Nothing. It's not how you feel. You don't have to feel any certain way. 
in your heart to make your ring work. It's about motivations. It should have been called the motivational spectrum. Uh, if anything, I'd love to go back and just uh, go back in time and fix it. But I just kind of went, okay, Jeff, like Jeff would say things sometimes and he would do things that were, weren't quite thought through, you know, he'd rather say emotional spectrum than motivational spectrum. Well, what do all those things have in common? Like, you know, willpower is not an emotion. My dog died today. It really made me feel willpower. You know, that's not an emotion. Willpower is a motivation. It's, it's you know, I will this to happen. This happens because I willed it to happen. This happens because I was afraid. I, I caused it to happen through fear. I caused this to happen through greed. I caused this to happen through anger and rage. I caused this to happen through love, compassion, or hope. You know, these are motivations. That's how to make those rings work. It drove me nuts. But now it's like cemented, you know, it's, it is, it's part of the whole thing now, you know, it's permanently called the emotional spectrum and completely gay. But the, uh, here's the thing. Because of me, there is a white power ring that DC Comics gave out to retailers. I don't think they thought that one through either. You've got a green power ring, you've got a yellow one, and there's a white one. There's a white power ring. I, you know, look, you're welcome. You're welcome, DC. Well, you can find it. I mean, there's a white power lantern. Let's go. Let's look it up on, uh, let's look it up on eBay. Now they sent me one of every lantern. I don't think they sent me a white power one though. Hold on a minute here. That's my email. Let me find eBay. Kind of like a white hour lantern. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, here's here's one right here. Now, if you want to, it's not the this isn't the lantern, but I found this right away. And I mean, DC, you can't blame me for this. You know, you can't, I know you want to, but you can't like, honestly, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even there. I didn't, even, you know, this was a natural extension of what I helped create, but I didn't even come up with this design. This is the uh, white power ring here and it lights up with light up feature includes a special key to unlock the power of the ring. And that key is privilege. It's a white power ring. You're going to be kidding me, dude. Yeah. There it is, Kekistanis. Whatever. 4chan doesn't talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, the white, pa the white lanterns were like... Uh, you know, we knew the Black Lanterns were death. So that's also not racist. Black power is death. Uh, and then, of course, like, because of that, like, all of the lanterns together, all the colored lanterns in the spectrum would get together and become white power lanterns. Like, when you say it out loud, it doesn't really sound that great. You know, it's like you've got all the colors of the rainbow, and they all come together and form white power. Considering that this was right before uh, everything went kablooey with Trump, I mean that you know it is it is interesting. It's just an interesting thing to note. Uh, Eddie Berganza is the one who reached out to me and said, "Will you design the white power ring?" And I said, uh, "Let me try it," because I did all the other symbols. 
And I turned in a very simple design for what the white power symbol would be. And uh, he rejected it. And he did he did his own version of it. So Eddie Berganza uh, is the guy who designed the white power symbol. These are interesting facts for uh, for DC to consider. Eddie Berganza did it. Not me. It wasn't me. Let me look and see if there's anything else here. I should look. I should add DC Comics to the search result. You know, search terms. That would probably help. Yeah. <clears throat> and they're fairly cheap. I mean, look, if you guys, uh, I don't think too many people are interested in this. But yeah, I mean, like $3, you get a Green Lantern plastic promo white power ring here. It's just $3. You know. And they sent these out to everyone. They were promo rings. <laughs> I'm not going to do any more. You guys can find that stuff on your own. Not too much has been made of it. I think DC's hoping nobody makes anything of it. You know? <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Akiram says, did you send Eddie Braganza, Braganza, he says, a swastika ring? No, of course not. Why would you ask such a thing? Cosmic Corsair says the ring should cost $14.88. That would complete the troll. But I, you know, again, you know, the naivete of it, the innocence of it is what I like. They didn't mean that. You know, they didn't mean, they didn't mean to do that. Uh, let me see. Uh, ag uh, willpower is the antithesis to emotion, says Billy Baxo. Yeah, exactly. Tuna Watt Studio says, I agree. I remember Atrocitus was not evil. He was motivated by rage. Tungsten XEE says, Ethan is depressed because Matt Martin found the fountain of youth. <laughs> Ethan aged well, but he aged. Yeah, Matt's always looked like a kid, though. Matt has kid face. He permanently looks 16. Uh, let's see. Uh, I read that. I read that. There's a pie from Keaton Smith, and uh, Keaton Smith sent me a smiley face. Dorby says, but the important thing is Doug wasn't in love with those copy strikers or anything. Yeah, it wasn't like he was in love with them. Uh, all right. Too much anger. Let it go. It's Christmas, says Steve Turney. For real. I, I'm, you know, that's exactly right. Hamburger Cheeseburger says Cyberfrog is a black award on Akinator. I don't know what that means. Michael Johnson Curry says, so are so you trying to get Finch to comic skate? LOL. Oh, you saw me today. Yeah, I went on Dave's stream. I, I tipped him a hundred bucks. I just said, gotta get you to do a Cyberfrog piece, pal. You know, he, I mean, he's super cool and everything about it, but yeah, right. He's not going to do a Cyberfrog piece. I'd pay him a lot though. He'd get, he'd get a five-figure paycheck to do Cyberfrog, a Cyberfrog cover. Absolutely. Yeah. He'd be worth it. I, I could uh, I'd put that cover everywhere. Yeah, Dave Finch. But, you know, he's busy. He's a busy guy. He's got a lot to do. You know, but I think he's one of these guys who is uncancel uncancelable. You can't cancel Dave Finch. Uh, DC sweats bullets whenever EVS goes on stream. <laughs> oh, I liked DC when I was there. You know, I told Dan DiDio, I said, Dan, I'll never run DC Comics down. 
no, I'll never do that. But then they fired Dan Didio. I just won't fuck it. I'll run down DC if I want to. <laughs> White power ring in my Google. So yeah, you will. I don't consider DC Comics right now to be DC Comics. It's not the same company I worked for. Everybody who I knew there is gone. There's something else now. So I feel free to say whatever I want about them. You know. Um, let me see. Ethan, did you enjoy working on New X-Men? Yes and no. You know, I did I did like parts of it. Other parts of it were tough. Marvel Comics is a depressing company to work for because they, you know, at the time, I don't know if they still are like this, but they were liars at the time. The editors that I worked for actually provably lied to me on many occasions and did things to fuck with me. And I didn't know why. It's back in 2002. I didn't know why that was going on. Uh, all right. I don't know. Maybe I'll go now. It's like 542 in the AM. Yeah. Marvel's always like on the edge of coming to a, a like a conclusion. You know, they're always afraid. And so the people there are just cutthroat and ruthless and Less interested in doing a comic book and more interested in other things. What is this here? Uh, work your minus magic on reality hackers. I don't know what that is. Is that a book? Is it a campaign? Uh, Gunnar Renee Olson says, are we talking about the Lucasfilm Matt Martin? No. Different Matt Martin. Uh, the Ray could be forced pregnant with Kylo Matt Martin? No. Very much not. Even though they look the same. That is a weird situation because Lucasfilm Matt Martin does resemble physically uh, our boy Matt Martin. Uh, he does. Uh, let me take a look at these campaigns here that I was promoting uh, earlier today. Cyberfrog 2 Rec Planet, everyone. Uh, if you haven't backed it yet, make sure that you do. It's uh, really, really great. Thank you. So we got a couple more backers. I appreciate that. Uh, make sure that you back Cyberfrog 2 Rec Planet. Uh, Rainbow the Brute is uh, two weeks in. We're halfway through Rainbow the Brute, and we're heading towards 300,000. Looks like we picked up some more backers there as well. Thank you very much for that. And Snowman, A Cold Day in Hell, Matt Martin's uh, return uh, to form. Uh, if you haven't backed Snowman, A Cold Day in Hell, now is the time. Let's get this to 1,000 backers. Uh, I want to get Matt to uh, six figures. I'll do it, too. I will get him there. Um, thanks everyone for watching the show today. Um, I'll leave it up. I, it's going to, it's going to hurt my, I know it's going to hurt my sub count. I'm so proud of my sub count right now. We're at 135. I'm heading to 140. I think I can get there by like January. By the end of January, I'll be at 140. That'll be pretty neat. Uh, so, uh, but it doesn't matter. I know a lot of people want to watch the live stream, so I'm, I'll leave it up. I promise you I'll leave it up for like two days. And then I'll, I'll unlist it, but you'll still have the link so you can watch it, you know, whenever you want. Um, thank you, everyone. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more videos. Please watch my videos, like my videos, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Uh, and uh, <laughs> do not leave it up. No, I have to leave it up. Uh, oh, yeah. Hit thumbs up, please. Like this video before I go. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks.